What's up, YouTube? I'm Robert, and this is the Biker Channel B1. Today, you are here for the 17th episode of The Biker Bar. Every Sunday at 5 p.m. PST, most of the time. <laughs> Every once in a while, it's a little early. Maybe it's a little late. But today, we are dead on time by two minutes. So nonetheless, I just want to start out. Thank everybody for being here. Um, I really, really appreciate you guys tuning in. That those of you that are here live and those of you guys that are ap after the fact on a uh, Apple podcast or Google play or SoundCloud. I appreciate you guys there too. Remember, please, if you like the content to like and subscribe, hit the thumbs up button, write a fucking review. Hopefully it's five stars. Otherwise I will like uh, somehow send an internet bomb to your e email address. If I have your email address, I'll probably send you, uh, I'm going to sign you up for some stuff that you probably don't want to be signed up for. Outside of that, um, like I've said to you in the past, and if you're here for the first time, please help the, the channel. Um, and, and when I say that, I, I really, really want everybody to help support this biker bar and to be a part of that growth. Um, the best way to do it is a watch the videos, B, like and subscribe. That like makes the YouTube algorithm, which is kind of like this mysterious God, do things for me. The same thing goes with if, if you're if you're listening to on a podcast, go ahead and pay attention to those. Just recently, I went through all of my videos and took all of the uh, the ads out of them. So there's only the the like the beginning ad and the la the the ending ad. So I did that because I really wanted you guys to. I want to get my support from you guys and not necessarily from, from all this like ad revenue kind of stuff. And I want to give you guys the best experience I can. So if you enjoy the content at the very least swing by uh, Patreon, which is at patreon.biker.com and uh, just sign, sign up for that. I have one that's only a buck a month. And in that, that buck a month club, I call it testing the water. Um, you can get access to coupons and most of the uh, most of the the vendors that I, I've done some videos with or done done some stuff with we have some additional savings so sometimes maybe I will put up a savings for like 10% on a regular video that goes out but those of you that are part of the patreon you can save a little bit more money so like let's just say project 321 i believe has a 25% discount or $25 off of otis that was on last week um different ones like some some savings with hand up gloves and a few others out there as well so definitely swing by patreon if you can at patreon.biker.com and outside of that this is the commercial side of the of the of the live stream so i am um, i'm trying to keep from having other people's commercials here that you want to slip through. So one more thing, if you're if you're here on the video, I'll explain this. If you're not on the video, I have these mud guards that have my lovely face on them. It is nothing but makes me smile every time I see these. A little mud guard says biker on it. You can pick these up at shop.biker.com. There's not many of these left. So hurry up and get one now because when this one disappears, who knows if it'll ever come back. So outside of that, here we are, Sunday, 17th episode, and we have Paul the Punter, who is geographically confused. He's a, a, a British guy that lives in Canada, does YouTube videos. Paul, tell us a little bit about your channel. Uh, thanks, Robert. First of all, for having me on. It's a great yeah. honor. I'm a big fan. I've watched, I think I've watched pretty much every one of these, bar a couple. So uh, yeah, my channel, um, uh, it's, it's kind of all about documenting my progression, I guess. Uh, I've, I live in a world, as you said, like in Squamish, where the standard of man biking is pretty high and I'm, I'm very low down the pecking order, but I always wimp out of stuff. So I found that if I started, when I started filming myself and doing that stuff, I became more accountable for, for not doing things. So now I, I kind of say like, okay, I need a video. I've got to go make a video. Oh, I've got to go and get better at my map, go and get better at man biking. So I guess that's what it's all about. And it's not just me, it's people around me like improving. I always like to have someone doing something new in a video. So uh, just to kind of, I don't know, make it a little bit different. Um, but yeah, that's that's what it's all about. You know what, when you started your channel, it, and, and this is my opinion, please correct me when I'm wrong. Um, when you started mm -hmm. your channel, you didn't start out that way. You started out, um, you, you you went the, the, the sensational route, the let, let's do something viral. What was that? <laughs> 
Uh, the warm up. I guess the I did like a couple of videos before, but I would say that I started on an actual like regular schedule ish when I did the warm up bike video. Yeah, but that was that was purely because. So I, I used to work at Pink Bike. I've, so, I, so I, wait a minute. I, I need to translate your accent for those of you that <laughs> are very familiar with it. what he's saying is in Walmart. English. Yeah. In in English, he used a Walmart bike. And uh, and he and would you ride you something in in BC or Whistler? I rode the bike park, yeah. yeah. I mean, so the the thinking was like I was I was just starting to um, yeah, well, I just started. I no, maybe a bit before, but I I used to work at Pink Bike, and my role, my final role when I was I'd left was creative strategist, but that kind of mainly involved me um, doing all things video for for Pink Bike, um, so. And I kept saying that if we made uh, a Walmart bike in Whistler Bike Park, it would be a huge video. And I kept saying it, and then the boss was just like, no, we can't do it because someone will hurt themselves. <laughs> so <laughs> I went, well, I'm just gonna go and do it then. <laughs> I was so, cause I was so convinced. And, I, and there were a couple of videos like that that I did. That was really just to kind of go, okay, if, we, if I did this and then this, it should do really well. So that was that was one of those videos, basically. And it was just I was just learning how to do more video stuff, right? Uh, like it was a, making my own videos was how I was going to learn to edit and film and, and color and do all that stuff. So that's how that's how it originally started. Just me as a place for me to learn how to make videos. Um, really. so, so that video is roughly uh, almost 500,000 views. So it, it did well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And Thank your you. channel, it, it your channel that that video came out in January third of twenty eighteen, mm -hmm. and I, I would assume at that time you had pretty low on your subscriber count. You're up to to fifteen thousand subscribers almost round in the year here. That's that's pretty damn good, Paul. Yeah, yeah, it's been good. Uh, it's never it's never really been the goal to get subscribers. I mean, there are a couple of videos where it's just like this is going to get a lot of views, and that's why I'm making this video, like the Walmart one. I mean, right. The Walmart one was crazy. The, the weird thing that I didn't expect was that I got so many subscribers from that one video. Mm -hmm. It was it was like I must have got like three thousand, three and a half thousand in like a couple weeks. Oh wow! It, and it all came from it, and I was just like, easy. Yeah. <laughs> YouTube is so easy. <laughs> I got this shit. It's yeah. so simple. Yeah, but I, I honestly, I honestly thought that that video was just going to go live, and then are oh, people just going to watch it, and that was it. The, the thing that I was surprised about was that people then subscribed. Mm -hmm. Like that was an action that I wasn't expecting. So, because originally it was like the whole purpose of this channel was I was gonna try things on, on YouTube and, be, and learn from it, like doing that. Uh -huh. So, and then someone said to me, it's like, well, like someone said to me, oh, but I mean, I know you're just doing this for an experiment, but I think you should own it now and like really kind of do it because you've made one video, like why can't you make a few more? So then I was like, oh, oh, okay. And then I kind of became a bit like, oh no, this is my YouTube channel rather than, oh, this is this is just a place for me to learn things. So so initially when you did that first video, it was really just to kind of like, like put the finger up to your boss who said you couldn't do it. And, and <laughs> no. <laughs> No, not quite like that. No, but it was a it little was, bit like that, though. It was it was more just kind of just show. <laughs> it was more to show for sure that I could look at something and figure out what a vid good video would be for views before you went and made it. Like uh -huh. that's for sure. That is why I did it because I said, "Hey, I I can look at all of these things, all of these trends, and all of these searches and everything." And you kind of put together and figure out what would be a successful video. Mm -hmm. So, like the better the better example for that was my Whistler Green Trails video. Okay, okay, that's on like two hundred and something thousand views. So, so basically, I, instead of going out there showing all the guys just doing the big shit, show people the average guy. Like, hey, when you show up, this is the run you're probably going to do. Well, no, <laughs> <laughs> I know you can think it, but no. If, so a great way to figure out searchable content on YouTube is you go in the search bar and you just start typing some words and it, it auto completes for you, right? Right. But so when you typed in Whistler, 
like the the fifth search item down was Whistler Green Trails, and there were no there were no Whistler Green Trails videos. So right. Like, so you clicked oh. that and you saw you saw like crab apple and all the big trails and you were like, oh, wait a minute. Well, no, you, you click on like you search and you, you search for Whistler Green Trails. There's one guy doing Easy Does It, which is like a fire road, basically. That's had 55,000 views and it's like a terrible video. Right. It's just trash. But clearly people want to watch it. So on op opening and I, I thought about, you know, doing it for Pink Bike, but I mean, you know, Pink Bike's trying to be more of a core mountain bike audience, right? So that it wouldn't really make sense. So I just, on the opening day, I was going, my first laps of Whistler this year were going around riding all the green trails. And I said, I'm going to make a guide. It's going to be super simple. I could probably bang it together in like an afternoon. And Eric from BCPAV was there and he was laughing at me as I was doing it. And I was like, buddy, you watch this. This is going to be watched more times than the warm-up bike video. And he just couldn't believe it. Anyway, yeah. like it got 70,000 views like super fast. And then like I heard people people in town w would like hear my voice on someone's phone. And they're like, what? And you turn around and they've got their, their phone there and they're like, oh, they're watching their Green Trails video. Oh, because there's funny. there are so many people that come just to be a tourist and go around Whistler and try mountain biking for the first time. And there was nothing there to for them to kind of learn about it, which is what YouTube's for, right? Like yeah, yeah. learn things from it. Yeah, so, no, it, it, it's totally funny how those things happen. And, and, yeah. and it's interesting to me what you just said there a second ago about how people go to places like that that aren't necessarily riders. Um, I was out wine tasting today with a lady and uh, one of the guys that was pouring at, at the place that we were at, I, was, I started talking to him about mountain biking and he's like, oh yeah, I've done mountain biking. I went up to North Star. And, it, and North Star is kind of like, it's a ski resort here in, oh, in yeah. the Chicago area. Yeah. And it has, it's, it's a park like that, a lift access park. And he was not a mountain biker though. And, and it really surprised me because in my head, up until that moment, the only people that go there are mountain bikers. And it never really dawned on me that like, yeah, people actually just, they're like, oh, that looks fun. That looks interesting. Kind of like people go out and, and, and decide to go white water rafting one weekend. They do <laughs> yeah. the same thing with mountain bikes at these parks. And honestly, like, holy shit. I never really <laughs> thought that somebody would do that because there's a level of skill and a level of danger that comes with riding like that, that, I would imagine that people probably in the rafting in the kayaking industry look at like noobs going out there on uh, class four stuff and, like, water, <laughs> yeah. are thinking the same thing. And, and it was, it yeah. really just kind of opened my eyes to things. Mm. So that that's interesting. I mean, up there that you have that, you know, this, this Mecca that, that yeah, us, us mountain bikers need to go ahead and, and, and take a step back and realize that we're not as badass as we think. And people are actually just going out there and just trying these things. Mm. Oh, that's yeah, for sure. Like, I, I I took a year off like life a few years ago and I went to Queenstown and I worked in the bike park in Queenstown, New Zealand. Mm -hmm. And I was I was blown away by the amount of people that were just coming and giving it a go. Like punters basically, right? They would oh. turn you turn up and like on a day and then all of a sudden you start seeing people coming through with like sunglasses and the full face helmets and giant glories and they come through and they're like and they're just doing it. And right. that was that blew my mind for for a while actually while I was there, because so, the green the green trail in that bike park it's not it's not easy it's pretty steep, right? Like, like it's not like the Whistler one where it's actually quite flat and then you know, right. probably anyone could you know sit down and roll down it. So like a New Zealand green is really like a like a, oh, a yeah. North American blue, huh? Oh yeah, hundred percent. <laughs> Hundred percent, yeah. So you just said something there that really I, I can't help but touch on. What the fuck is a punter? <laughs> that is the that is the number one American, thing. A punter is a guy in in this game that we call football that you guys call soccer. Yeah. Um, that's a it's punter. It's different. Yeah. Football is yeah. different from soccer. Yeah, but you guys call it football too. So like I, I'm 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 just saying saying so. What okay. the hell is a punter? I know I've asked you this like personally in the past. So but like I think his... it's definitely a question that needs to be asked for this show. Well, yeah, I, I probably will make a video about it because people all forever are just saying what's a punter. And apparently in a, some guy told me that in Australia, like a punter is someone that exclusively goes to hookers. And oh, I was really? like, shit, <laughs> people think that my channel's like, oh, 
today on Paul the Punter, I'm going to go and check out this brothel around the corner. And that's <laughs> like, how you get no. 500,000 views on your Walmart. Yeah, maybe that's it. Everyone's like, I mean, where's the hookers skipping through? Right? <laughs> no, like, no, never. I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, it's, it's like, I really kind of thought about it. Originally, we called, like, people would say, like, there's a term called Joey which is the people that like stand on jumps and kind of just generally do the wrong thing all the time. Like, or, you know, go jumps off jumps sketchy and whatever. That's but, a PNW term. Uh, at least it was for me. Like whenever I heard, yeah. I think it, it was like Josh from a uh, daily M MTV rider that had started using that term and maybe some of you other guys up there. And I was like, I don't, I don't know that one, but I'm not a park yeah. guy though either. So maybe yeah. it is pretty popular down here, but yeah. So Joey is basically like like a Grom, like a like somebody just starting out. But well, not, a Grom, a Grom is a kid. Right, right. So not not a Grom, but just like a dumbass fucking adult standing mm. in the way. Mm -hmm. That's trying that's, to get into that, this. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And I was like, oh, Joey's are the same as punters, right? But then I thought about it, and I was like, as I just said, it's people that kind of they just turn up, and they're like downhill mountain biking. Yeah. I'll try that. And they go up <laughs> and they give it a go. And like, they just, they just go for it probably more than me going for it in certain situations. Right. Yeah. And it's so, just like, it's such a good, like positive thing to associate with mountain biking. Is the, yeah. Is the oh. idea that you're just gonna, you're just gonna try. That's awesome. Because you I was going to say, we both have endearing terms for the people that watch our channel. I call all of my people bitches, and you call them punters. So, <laughs> But apparently yours is a little nicer than mine. So mine may, may be a bit more friendly, yeah. You yeah. need to reevaluate the political correctness of my channel? <laughs> Maybe not. So yeah. <laughs> so, so here, here, here you are, this guy that, that works for Pink Bike that's in Canada, but you're British. How did you, uh, as a Brit, end up in Canada? Uh, so historically, I don't think like Canadian, like like don't, don't doesn't the British the British they don't really like the French, right? And Canada is uh, like like the French's cousin. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> oh, I, I don't know. But it's funny enough, like I I actually used to live in. I'm just I keep moving back and forth by the way because I've got this heater behind me. I am in my garage and it is freezing because it's in Canada. So if I just kind of. I'm going to turn it in an angle and then we should be good. But yeah, like, so I, I actually used to live in France for a bit as well. I lived in uh, Morzine, which is in the Alps, but I, did, I, I wasn't a fan of living there. But I think, um, yeah, so I came, I came here on that year off when I, when I was in New Zealand. And then I, I did like a summer in New Zealand and then I could come to Canada and do another summer. So I had like a year and a half of no winter which was like pretty amazing. And then I, I came here and I used to work for Dirt Magazine. That I worked there for almost three years in the center of London. Um, so I, when I came here, I kind of like went, well, I need to figure out what I'm gonna do for a job when I get back to the UK. So uh, I reached out to Carl Pinkbike and said, hey, like I'm going back to Europe. Uh, I'm pretty sure I heard that you were looking for a European advertising person to work from there. Um, do you wanna do something? And then after a, after a bit of chatting, uh, I ended up doing that. So I start I started over here, and then I went back to to the UK, and I worked for Pink Bike from Europe. So I would work with all the European brands, basically. So, so let's take a step back. And um, you you grew up like through like grade school and everything in the UK. Oh yeah, yeah. I've only, I only moved to Canada in May 2016. Probably uh -huh. that's when I left. Yeah. So. In the UK, you guys, you don't call it like high school. You guys call it like uh, something else. Oh, right? yeah. So it's funny. Like there's there's a uh, there's a lot of Americanization in the UK. So right. we, like when I grew up, it was called secondary school. Uh huh. Now it's all called high school. Yeah, but back okay. So because I had a buddy that was from from Liverpool, and oh, yeah. uh, or actually he was from Great Yarmouth, but uh, Liverpool was, his, was his, so his, far. Right? Yeah, I, know, <laughs> I, just, I just remembered it as I said it. <laughs> Liverpool was his, his, that was his soccer team that he loved. Oh, um, okay. Yeah. But, but uh, Great Yarmouth is, is where we was from. And uh, I remembered him calling it secondary school. So, um, so that's after that, like you guys, do you have school there that allow, like, like college? Is that like part of your, like it's free, like university, or is it like, 
you have to pay like like here in the states yeah you have to pay like so how it how it works so we have years like year seven year eight and i'm pretty sure it's like grade seven is the same as year seven uh-huh like in terms of that but how it works is that you go um you do high school or secondary school from like 11 to 16 years old and the exams that you do at the end of that are called gcses so that's right. like your first exams then if you want to count those that's mandatory now you can choose to leave school at 16 but if you want to carry on through education the next thing you have to do is a levels which are 16 to 18 so you do two years that's year 12 and year 13 and then uh, that's when you go to university so we don't yeah. call it college 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 is like a, um uh, it's like another another type of education so you might go to college to you could I mean, you, there are colleges you can do A levels at, but generally, if you go to a, a college, it's like you study mechanic, you know, to be a mechanic or more of a it's trade. Like trade schools, then. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I was thinking that my, but because I remember when my buddy came over here, I want to say he was like fifteen or sixteen. I, maybe it was sixteen, and he had said like, "Oh, I already graduated high school, but I came to the states, and now I got to go back to high school." Like, because yeah. to him, he was like done or whatever. You know, maybe he was a der derelict. He probably was my friend, so it's a good chance. <laughs> so, um, so, so I was just just trying to lay that all out. So, and I think that you like as you're going through high school back there, you're kind of like deciding at that point, do you want to go to trade school? Where like as a sophomore in high school here, we're not really picking a path yet. And I think yeah. over there you are. And the reason that I'm getting to that is, how did you get from going through that that education path that the UK has? to working at a magazine as as like a dirt mag i mean obviously were you just like in the right place uh, the right time, you wait you wait for this pathway through my life robert you're going to enjoy this okay oh, so yeah, do it man so up until uh all the way through school i was i was like i'm gonna be a composer a music a music composer i was like i was all i was all in like and we had a not many people did music at the school I went to for um, for A levels, it was like there were three of us learning music by the end. So, mm -hmm. oh no, four of us, four of us, take it back. And yeah, so I was all in, and I was like composing, and I was like spending time with people that did um, like um, like uh, Planet Earth. You know that really famous documentary series? I'm pretty sure oh, yeah, it's yeah, on yeah. there. Yeah, Everything. like he he did the music for that. Oh, and wow. I was like spending time, I spent some time with him, like watching him like do do composition and stuff for TV. Uh, and then I went to university in Lancaster, which is uh, up north. And um, yeah, did, I went there to do music and did I have a degree in music. That is what my education is in. That's interesting. You know, I actually yeah. went to school the, the same reason. The, uh, part of the reason that I left Germany when I got out of the army instead of staying there was because I wanted to come back to California so I could be a fucking rock star and mm. I uh, I went to school for studio recording so uh, went no through way. All, yeah all the way through school for that was just about to graduate and decided after a job interview and potentially like essentially getting the job offered to me at a major studio in Berkeley I decided that I didn't want to do that anymore and oh, wow. uh, yeah. So then I ended up, um, I just was taking like computer classes for fun and doing my general education. And next thing you know, I was freaking, I was an IT guy. <laughs> so no, it's, it's interesting to see how people, people go about their way. So you, you explained to me doing this music thing and maybe I missed it. I'm sorry. I stood up for a second for something. And, um, so how did you get from the music thing to the dirt magazine? Ah, oh, so there's even more, there's even more steps in between. So I did, um, so kind of like partway through, partway through doing my degree, we got this new composition teacher and he, he kind of ruined it for me, really. I really fell out of passion for it. I was just like, nah, I, I, I give up. So I, I got more, I just kind of, um, I just cruised, cruised through the end of my university, got my degree. Like there were some bits like comp, com composition I was still like into. But just the kind of everything, like for sure, my my passion had kind of gone. Um, so, because so the he, teacher that kind of ruined it for you? Yeah, like honestly, it was. It sounds like a really kind of cliche, like 
or I'm, I'm a quitter thing to say. But it was like we were doing really like avant-garde stuff, like really weird things and like pushing. And I, that's, what I, that's what I wanted to do. And then he came in and said, oh, for this whole year, we're going to do basics. And we yeah. were like, hold on, we're, this is higher education. Like, why are, we right. going, why are we going back? And that's what really like put it in. And then, and then I got really into darts and pool and like bar pubs and everything. And I put on so much so, weight. So right about that time you're in your early twenties or. Yeah. 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 Like 20. Bars and 21. pool. And pubs. That's really strange. Yeah. That you got oh, darts, darts and pool were my life. Like <laughs> uh -huh. I'm not joking. I would go to the, the student union bar at like midday if my lectures had finished then. And I would play solidly till like 11 o'clock closing. It That's was funny. just, I, that was the first thing that I really got, like, after mountain biking, I got addicted to it. And that's when I stopped mountain biking for a bit. And I just put on loads of weight. I, like, I think I weigh, I, we we're trying to do the maths. I must have weighed over 200 pounds. If I'm like 160 now, I was like over 200 pounds. That's crazy. It's <laughs> funny. We have a, a bunch in common because I, uh, in the, the latter part of my high school career, I really got into pool too. Oh, I mean, yeah. And, and I, I was playing a lot. And it was actually, oddly enough, it was a source of income for me because we would go to this pool hall and I would be there, you know, we would get there like in the early afternoon. And, and sometimes like I didn't have very strict parents or family values or whatever you want to call it. And we would be there until, you know, two o'clock in the morning. And, and what we we did though is we started paying like playing to pay or paying to play right yeah, so yeah. it'd be like hey it's 20 bucks a rack for a nine ball or it'd be 50 bucks for this and and that was really how i i made them instead of having a job like that that i made a lot of money that way oh nice and, and, and the funny thing is is that now i i had, pool is one of those things that if you don't do it it goes away quick yeah. And, and now I go to the pool hall and I know like all the shots and I know how to make them, but I can't do it because I don't do that anymore. So it's yeah. like, oh, I need to just put like a top right English on this. It'll set that up over there. And, yeah. you know, when you get really good at pool, you actually are not paying attention to the shot that you're making. You're paying more attention to the shot that you're setting up. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So, so like and I you, go into you a, play you play through the whole frame and you're like, right. oh, I just go there, 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 and then I've won and he's not even side the table. Right. Like like for yeah, me, yeah. It, it's like instead of getting this ball in, like, hey, nine or like let's say, you know, fifteen ball corner pocket, like you're yeah. not actually like you know you have that. But what yeah, you're more yeah. concerned about is where you put the cue ball for the next shot. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and so for me, like now I go to play pool and I have that mindset. But the skill set's not there anymore. Yeah. So it's like I'm trying to set that ball up for the next shot, and instead I miss the shot that I'm on. You know, so you have that you have that same thing happen. Oh yeah, yeah for sure. Like I just play, I just played so much, and then realized that I should probably not play so much because it was yeah. pretty detrimental. So I, after I did that, I kind of had the the early life crisis of of having a music degree and then not knowing what I was going to do next. <laughs> and so then, music career to pool hall, and then. And then I actually started another undergrad degree in engineering, which I should have done first because I, I loved that engineering degree so much. And I was, I was on for like, I, uh, apart from kind of a couple of exams at the end, I was on for the you know, first, like top, top mark. Because uh -huh. I, I, I just liked it and it was maths and it all made sense and it was yes or no, do you know what I mean? Uh huh. But then uh, after that, like that's when I really got kind of like, oh, what am I doing? <laughs> like, I I'm gonna, there, it's yeah. funny you just said that about math and yes or no. I always say there's two kinds of people in this world. There's math people and English people, like yeah. people that are just good with numbers, and then people that are just good with words. And um, I could I could get a good grade in a math class, but but English was always that like I I could I could write a paper ten minutes before class like like wake up hungover shit it out and get an a but like math i had to be like in in the lab doing the work putting the time in it just didn't come easy to me so, mm -hmm. so you're definitely one of the math people but it sounds like you got the communication down so how did you go from engineering now to this fucking yeah. dirt magazine so there's a, there's a couple more steps <laughs> oh god so, yeah so the we thickens. yeah so then i uh and then i kind of went well what the hell am i doing and i had like this call um and I went to this recruitment center for this uh, this 
recruitment agency that specialized in grad placing graduate sales people. Uh -huh. So you get your degree and then you go and get your first sales job. And then I kind of went, well, let's call them back up. So after a year, I'd said, and they were like, oh, yeah, like we definitely want to have you on the book. And then like a week later, they called me up and said, oh, here's this really good job with a company car. Like, let's get you interviewed for it. And I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh, maybe I could do this. And then right. uh, and then after a couple of interviews, my first job was with GlaxoSmithKline as a pharmaceutical rep. So, so now uh, you're selling drugs, <laughs> not drugs. So I'd go to, Oh no, um, that's pharmaceutical. I hate to tell you, no, you went from being it, a it music was, student to, to then selling drugs. Being a no, show, I was a, being a drug dealer. I can see the progression. Yeah. It was, <laughs> it was consumer healthcare. So I would go to dentists and I would basically try to convince the dentist to recommend like uh, Sensodyne and Corsodil and Aquafresh and all the stuff that GSK did. And I loved, I fucking loved it. I was so interested in dental stuff. I was even thinking like, maybe I could just be a dentist now. Like I could well, go to school. I mean, being a dentist in, in, in the UK is not a bad profession to be in. You guys may or may not be known for your 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 fine dental like uh, genealogy or whatever word I'm looking for. <laughs> I, the, I, I am so confused by this because like the, it depends where you go. And it's like, it, normally it was, it's like, yeah, caries or like tooth decay that it's called it's like it's there's a lot of factors that will you know meet like there's there are high caries right. areas that yeah. generally like lower socioeconomic conditions so that would be it i mean myself i i've never actually had a filling which is one of my last claims to fame so no, far, there you go so far loads of gum recession but no fillings <laughs> anyway so seems like the next viral video on the punter channel yeah yeah like <laughs> i got a tooth out no way you won't believe it yeah um so i yeah i did i did that for a bit and then i kind of again like a couple years afterwards i was getting really frustrated by how like nothing would happen do you know what i mean like you couldn't go anywhere like they it was yeah. all promises but then actually there were there were little things and i was young and i was like oh i've got to keep going and keep going like do better than all my friends like that's that's it i've got to be like yeah that. and then i kind of went like i wasn't i wasn't like super stoked on everything and life and and i kind of went well but i was really happy when i was riding bikes so then i just went and bought a bmx and i started going to the skate park and i started riding again i was like this is sick and then after a while, I stopped doing work or finishing work <laughs> earlier. And I was like, I'm just going to go and ride now because I had like company car. So I'd like the moment it was emptied of tooth of like samples, it would BMX would go in and I'd go to the skate park. And I was like, this is rad. And then I went, well, like I'm looking for a new job. Like let's try and get back into the bike industry. And I got tried to get in touch with everyone. And like you need to be like you need to be in the bottom. Like so like working in a bike shop and then kind of feed into sales sales uh -huh. ways and i was like hold on guys like i've got a lot of pretty decent training here like you know uh and then i just i was there was one more i tried one more job and it was to work uh for ride bmx ride uk uh, and dirt magazine and then i i went down and i wore a suit and i looked back and i was like "Fuck, that was so dumb because <laughs> like no one always everyone was just like this like if i turn up to an interview like this right like it would have it would have seemed normal but it was weird right. that i came into the suit and i learned that like a few months later but uh yeah then i started working for dirt and i liked it and it was really i felt at the beginning i was really kicking myself because i felt like I'd so made, essentially made a you were just like over the dental thing and you just started trying to get into the bike industry yeah i i kind of went back a bit and i was like well this is i mean working for this corporation is pretty corporate like oh surprise surprise <laughs> Yeah. Right. So, uh, and then uh, I was like, "Oh, yeah, let's go and do something more out of it." So, yeah, that's why I think I you nailed it. Though I mean, you, were, you were saying, I think what you said there that really stood out to me is like that part of being that you know, in your in your early twenties or whatever, and you're really trying to, for whatever reason, like you're trying to prove to the people that you went to high school with that you yeah. and your family yeah. or whatever that you can be like bigger and better and. I, I, I did the same thing with my career, you know, like there was a part where I like in IT, it was like, I want to have more users in the company that I'm working with and a bigger budget and I want to be spending more. And, and, and there came a point in my life though, where I realized that none of that fucking mattered. And, yeah. And, yeah. And that really, was pretty, that was pretty much it. Yeah. yeah I mean, I, I'm still like it. 
I, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm inherently competitive. And yeah, like, and there's, there's no you can get away from it. I think that doesn't go away, but I think what does happen as you get a little older is that you become a little bit more in tune with what your skill set actually is and how that going to work every day is actually like, like it needs to be something that is actually like, like makes you feel good more than just like the paycheck. And I think oh, when yeah. you're young, that paycheck or that like um, glamour of the job that you have means something. And as you get older, you realize that it doesn't. Mm. And I but think you're, kind of, you're preconditioned, right? Yeah. For sure. Like you're conditioned yeah. by every society. It's like, I mean, the whole point of like going to university so you can get a good job. Right. And then it's like, right, I've got to get a good job. Like that's the reason I'm here. But then, it, uh, yeah, as you say, you get older, you kind of like learn a few more things about life. And then you realize, oh, that's, that's not why I went to university. Like really. But you, you, you would, even if someone told you like then, you'd never, you'd never Oh, there's listen. no way you would listen to. No. I mean, no. I wouldn't even listen to myself from fucking five years ago. Yeah. You know, like, like, let alone listen to like, like 20 year old Rob, like wouldn't listen, wouldn't give freaking this guy the time of day, dude. Like yeah. if, if I was to tell 20 year old Rob that I wasn't going to be working in the music industry, he'd tell me to go fucking catch a rabbit. You know, <laughs> you know he'd be like, yeah, yeah, right. dude. There's no fucking way I'm not working in the music industry, you know? And, and uh, yeah. to, to like tell, you know, 15 year old me, you're going to be like doing a YouTube, uh, you're going to be doing videos on, about bikes on the internet mm -hmm. for practically free, but you're going to just do it because <laughs> you love it. Like, nice, I'd yeah. be like, yeah, right, dude. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, yeah. So, so, um, through, through all that process, where, where did mountain bikes come, come into the mix? Cause here you are at this bike park doing BMX stuff. That's not a mountain bike. Uh, well, I mean, I start like I grew up in Bath, and that's where uh, MBUK was was based. Not any, not anymore. It's all changed. But like, what's, MB, what's what's MBUK? Us M Americans don't know what that is. M MBUK, it's pretty big. Like I would say globally, um, but obviously not big enough to need it now. <laughs> <laughs> no. So it's uh, it, it was like you know before the internet and everything, it was the thing. It was it was so big, and because it was based in Bath, like there was a lot of there was a lot of mountain biking happening. Uh -huh. And I, you know, I started riding BMX when I was younger, and then I and then my friend, it's classic friend gets mountain bike, I got mountain bike. Um, but we weren't really doing mountain biking; we were just doing jumps. Like that was it. We were right. like going somewhere. We were riding for an hour and a half to go and ride three jumps or whatever. Yeah, like that. That's what we were doing. Um, That's kind of how my BMX career was, you know, it was like me and my buddies would ride all the way across town. And it would take us like two hours to get over there just so we could jump over the street, you know, and, you know, it was essentially like a big tabletop or, you know what I mean? Or yeah, some, yeah. some, some big jump that we were going to do. And then it'd be like, okay, now we're going to ride another hour to the other side of town. And we're going to do this, like this staircase jump or, you know, like, and then we're going to ride over here. And we're going to do that. So, I mean, I think that's part of, I mean, I would hope that children nowadays are still doing the same thing. There's a part of me that 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 doesn't. Well, probably it. probably not because there's so much mountain biking available. Like it's yeah. easy to go and do. Like in the UK, there's like so many trail centers and like yeah. even places like Surrey, which is where I used to ride. Like there's loads of trails everywhere. They're really easy to find, and it's kind yeah. of like socially accepted. Like you're not going to try and put two mounds of dirt in there and then all of a sudden they're going to get knocked down by someone. Yeah. And when I was that age, you know, like all of my friends did, did BMX. So like, that's what we did for the most part. And the guys that I mountain biked with when I was in, in middle school and, and into high school, I mean, they were all in their like thirties and forties. So it was like, I, I rode BMX and did all that shit like midweek or whatever with, with my, with my, my high school or my middle school buddies. But, you know, come come the weekends or whatever it was that I run out and I rode with these old guys to ride mountain bikes. And that type of riding that we did, like, I'd tell my friends about, oh, yeah, we rode 20 miles and we went up this hill and it was fun. And they would be like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Dude? <laughs> like, yeah. So we were going to go smoke pot and like freaking do kickouts on trash cans, man. You know? nice. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, you, so you work for this Dirt Magazine for a while and then you end up at Pink, Pink Bike. Well, what yeah, I that? took... 
I I really got kind of again it's like I I kind of got bored and I kind of didn't really see what was there was there was a lot of like the the factory media that owned it like mm -hmm. it's it like to get to a point where I, I kind of didn't really have much trust in what was going on like the people behind the magazine and the other people were great but there was some really like it was just weird and like the we side of it, the part of the business side of the magazine didn't yeah. fit the culture side that you thought you, yeah. were, you were like like signing up for. Yeah, I mean, it's, when I first started, and people were like, "Oh, this is so corporate," and I'm like, "Are you, are you fucking kidding? Like, I've just yeah. come from the third largest pharmaceutical company in the world. Like, right. this isn't corporate." But then, like after a while, I, I kind of got it, and and I yeah, it was just like the classic thing. Like you you would hit a target, and then you'd achieve something. And then they immediately try and screw you out of the bonus. They're like, well, how did you get it? It's like, well, it's right here. Like, here's my sales. Here's the target. I've done it. And they're like, oh, but, you know, and it would always be that. And I just, I just really hated it. And then I was at this enduro race in Wales and I had an asthma attack after the first stage. Uh, and then um, didn't tell my mum I was having an asthma attack, but drove home, <laughs> drove back. Is, is that I was, asthma that you said? Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm, so I'm I was in lady for us English folk. Or <laughs> us <the> American folk. <laughs> yeah. So I uh, let me just turn it down a bit. Turn it up. So I went. Um, I was in this race. It was like near Wales. So like, imagine I was here. Uh, my my mum's house is in the middle, and then I was living in London over here. So what I, the plan was, I was going to do this race, then stay, have dinner at my mum's, and then go home. So while I was still having this asthma attack, and I say like, I wasn't like, <gasps> but I was like pretty tight. Uh, I was there and I was just like, mom, I'm just, not, I'm just not happy. Like, this is so like boring. Like, I don't really see what I'm going to do and I don't know where I'm going to go. And then she just said, you should go traveling. And it was so weird because my mom had always been like, when I was younger, she was pretty anti me mountain biking. Right. She was she was like, you need to do like I used to get up at like six in the morning and do schoolwork. And that meant that maybe by 12, I could I was allowed to go on my man bike. Right. So it was really weird. And like the whole concept that she was actually then going to go, oh, do you know what? No, you should quit your job and just go <laughs> travel. And she was like, we'll help you out as well, because uh, it was so expensive living in London. Yeah. And then. And then I said, well, I mean, I've always wanted to go to New Zealand. She was like, well, go to New Zealand. And I was like, well, if I'm going to New Zealand, I may as well. And I looked at the prices and I was like, well, if I go to New Zealand and back, it's it's actually cheaper to go to New Zealand and Whistler and then back. And then she was like, do it. And I was like, okay, I will. <laughs> and then, yeah. and then like, uh, on, Mom. at this point, how old were yeah. you? Oh, I was 26. Right yeah, on. 26. And yeah, it was like, it was like, I never had a year off, year out of, school as it's called right. i was just always doing it so it was like okay this is going to be my year off so yeah, it was so funny like i and then i just like i handed my notes in while i was at this euro a uh, euro bike yeah, and a very european thing to do is to t take a year off and like go travel yeah do you not do you not do that in like america like when you go traveling like when do you normally do it in um, education it, like like when you're 40 oh right okay you can afford it you know yeah <laughs> Like yeah, it, okay. it, it's really just not. I mean, like for for Americans, and, and please, all you on the on the chat, correct me if I'm wrong. But for the most part, like you get out of high school, it's like get a fucking job or go to school. Yeah. And, and and at that point, you know, it, it's like maybe when you graduated high school, you got to go on like a senior trip somewhere for two weeks, mm -hmm. or maybe when you graduated college, you got to go to Europe for a month. But it is definitely when I lived in Europe, there was a lot of people that did that kind of like, I'm going to travel for a while. Yeah. And then, then I'm going to come back. And, and I don't know what it is like, like geographically or associate, like, like from, from like your, your country. I, I'm, I'm at a lack, lack of words for right now, but like something is different in, 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 in just the way that people go about things there compared to mm. here in the U S and I think it's a beautiful thing. I think that if, if we did do that, we'd probably be a little better off, but yeah. um, maybe that's why we have the, the most people in, in the world in prison. So I don't know, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where that came from. That was a, bit of a change of face. Yeah. yeah. I mean, pe people need, people need some time to go out and be themselves, you know, and, and have like a little bit of uh, freedom and find themselves. And, and instead it's like very, you know, to the grind, I would, I guess, is what why I made that comment. But mm -hmm. nonetheless, um, 
so so basically you do this time in new zealand then and, and you're you're swinging through bc on your way back home and and that's when you land this like this thing with pink bike or yeah well i did i was in new zealand from october to may and then i was in uh, whistler from may till october like that's how that's how that year went and then i think in like july uh in like july i started talking to carl and then i started working for pink bike at the end of august that year so i was still i was doing european sales stuff but while i was like being a season air and it was pretty weird because i would like there was one week that i flew over to my first week was flying over to germany and then like halfway through and i i worked at the the north face shop for like a couple of months as well while i was in whistler so everyone's like oh you have you got like a split shift it's like oh yeah I can maybe come riding and then like one week they're like oh we didn't i didn't see you last week it's like oh yeah i was in germany and they're <laughs> like how did you what are you taking it serious and i was like oh yeah because i it was just going to the eurobike show which i've been to a whole bunch so i didn't think anything of it what but year I, was this about when, when you're 20, 2014 was when i started yeah so yeah. so at that point pink bike was still pretty small or I, no I, I it's massive into, yeah i just got into the the youtube game in the last two years so yeah well I mean, pink pink bike has been massive since i was like a, a young teenager like i remember um, being 14 years old and that how it started is that you it was the play it was the place that you could upload pictures of your bike like that mm -hmm. was a huge it was a huge thing in like when I was a kid, you upload pictures of your bike and then you would post it in the, the forum, which is called Southern Downhill. And that's how you did it. And then you started using Pink Bike. And then all of a sudden they added like a news feed and like things that you could go and look at. And right. I remember that. Um, but yeah, Pink, Pink Bike, when I first started, it was, it was when well, I started working, it's, it's the largest out of uh -huh. all, all bike media, like easily. Oh, okay. So, so yeah, it's uh, it's like it was just the play. Like if you want to sell your bike, you'd go to Pink Bike. If you want to see the latest video, you would go to Pink Bike. It was just like default for everyone, uh -huh. for sure. Yeah. So you really got to do a lot of travel with them. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I I'd say just since mountain biking, I've done a lot of travel. Like even when I was working at Dirt Magazine, like I've been riding in Fort William. I went. I did road trips like through. Um, through Europe, like riding in Austria, Germany, France, obviously. And then I did like the mega avalanche one year in, in uh, Alpe d'Huez. And just just a whole bunch of places, like, even around the UK. Like, And I would never have done it if I wasn't mountain biking. Like, I just, you just wouldn't have to do it. And I actually talked to this dude, Ollie Wilkins, once about like, you know, what do people do when they go on holiday? Like, we just couldn't figure it out. Like, you go on holiday, you go on a mountain bike trip. Like you say you're mountain biking, you go mountain biking. Like the whole principle of just going somewhere and like being somewhere, we just found it so like, I st for me now, like if I went on a holiday, I'd be like, when when are we mountain biking? Like this is where we come on holiday, right? It's like sightseeing and stuff. Like, I just yeah. don't, I can't. I, I've ridden bikes out. like since the 90s and it was never really something that I, I put in, put thought into about where I go. And whether or not I could do that, and now I can relate with what you're saying. Um, yeah. When when um, Moonlight got married last year, and it was like, oh, we're going to Hawaii. Where the hell am I going to ride while we're there? Yeah. You know, and it was like, and, and and that was the first time that I like went somewhere far away, and part of the goal of going there was riding bikes, yeah. and it was such a like a, a pivotal moment in my life for me because. It just was really like this this is what living life is about like you know like not only going somewhere and seeing the culture but like going and doing something you just love and for anybody out there like i will say hands down one of one of the 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 top five reasons that i love my channel is the fact that it got me to start going places and riding yeah. You know, because before that it was like, yeah, I'll just ride my local shit, you know, because I like yeah. riding bikes and these are the trails I like riding. But it wasn't like, no, there's like a whole world of places out there to ride. You should go yeah. do it. Yeah. And I can't stress to people enough that really like anybody that's watched my channel, like, honestly, I'm not I'm not like making like the YouTube truckload of money has not dropped off at my house yet you know and uh and but what it has done though is shown me like 
here I have over a hundred videos on my channel right now. And they're all these different trails that I could just drive to within a couple of hours that I never would have went to if it wasn't for, for riding bikes, you know? And mm -hmm. I think that, that, um, people should take advantage of that, you know, like it's not that far for you to drive a couple hours to go somewhere and try something new. Like yeah. people back on the East coast, if you live in New York city, drive down to Ashland and fucking ride it. You know what yeah. I mean? If you live in Florida, drive over to fucking Texas and, yeah. and, and, and see what they got over there or here in, in California or BC. Like, like it's really not that far to go yeah. and just experience something that's so different and not, it doesn't have to be like, like going on, like, as you would say, holiday or vacation where it's something super expensive and it's like $3,000 for there you to go. It's like, no, put a tent and a sleeping bag and a bike in your car or your truck and drive for 12 hours. And now you can be in Sedona, you know, like, yeah, yeah, it is. It does like there's two, there's one, one thing, especially that always blows my mind. So like, there's, a, I got a story about, <clears throat> I did the I did the sea otter enduro uh, a couple of years ago, and I was stood there and and I just like was talking to people, and like I just remember this chat and it was all about bike bike products like con constantly like oh I've got these carbon wheels and blah 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 and these are the best and I was like where where have you guys been riding like where where else have you gone and they're like oh I just ride my local trails and it's like right. Well, and there was uh, the guy lived somewhere in the Rockies, I think. Mm -hmm. It was like Central North America, maybe Idaho, I guess. Mm -hmm. And I was like, "Oh, have you been to BC? Like, it's only seven hours away. Like, that's that's nothing." Right. And he was like, "Oh no, no, could could never do that." And I was like, "What? What, <laughs> what do you mean you could never do that?" Like, and I was, and I kind of. I kind of I get the point. I was like, tell me why. Like, tell me the re tell me the reason. Like, uh, but that was it. It's like, and this is the thing you hear like a lot of the time is the, oh, I could never do that. I mean, fair enough. Like, I'm in a pretty uh, you know selfish situation where I have zero dependence. I like I have I have my own house. Like, I don't have a lot of uh, co life commitments, and it's yeah. all man biking. So I fully appreciate. It. It's very easy for me to say this. But I know a whole ton of people that have all those commitments and still are able to go and do this stuff. So I don't, there's certain times where I'm like, mm, I'm not sure how much of this is like real. I mean, a lot of the time it's just like the fear. Sometimes, sometimes people just put these barriers upon themselves. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and they don't actually try. And I think that's what I was getting at even with, you know, starting my channel. Like I had the same excuse. Oh, I couldn't do that. I, yeah. I mean, I, I couldn't drive down to LA just to ride a trail and then turn around and drive home. Yeah, but you, abs you absolutely can. And it just yeah. blows my mind. And people, like, the it is a little bit heartbreaking. So one of the things, um, I mean, it's not so much now in the YouTube world. If you do a video about a trip or tourism, people are still interested. But, right. like, we we always knew, like, we could – Go, we could go to a location like in Switzerland. We were at Lenzerheide and we had to do a photo shoot in the bike park. And it was about the bike park. And I was just like, we're going to spend all day and maybe some more and like editing this and putting it together. And it's going to get a tenth of the views as if we walked over to Sam Blankensop and did a bike check about his bike and just went snap, 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 snap. And like, okay, job done. And it, it really like, and I, I don't really think it'll ever change because bikes are very easy to kind of learn about and understand. Like, you know, you can understand about a Santa Cruz bike or a, a Trek bike or a, a Canyon or whatever, because you can learn, read the specs, it's very available. But uh, like talk about location, yeah, it takes a lot of effort. Like, as you say, like driving down to LA just for one trip. And it right. just like, I, I really, sometimes I wonder like, why you know if you get if you get like the opportunity to go somewhere or like oh like you know like even even whistler like this is super easy for me to say this but back when i back when i was working in london like the thought of going to whistler was ridiculous like i was yeah. like there's no there's no way i could ever go there and i mean then it's it was, the planet for god's sakes yeah that's true <laughs> but then like as after that like you know that chat with my mom and that that afternoon like pretty much changed it did change my entire life but 
like that moment i was just and then when i started to go to new zealand and then i'd go around new zealand a bit and i'd do this stuff and then i was in whistler and like yeah and then i came back here and then i was like i think i i figured out uh i was going to see a load of brands in switzerland and then i was just like well hold on like if i'm in i'm there i could finish meeting with verbier and then i could just spend the weekend in verbier and like go around there and just like see what it's about so i so i did it yeah. like there's a lot there's, i do feel that there's a lot of that like even like moab last year when i went i just went by myself i was i tried to find someone to go down with and there was no one available there's no one free like no one had any holiday and i and i just went well why, why don't I just go by myself like what's the worst that's gonna happen so i drove down by myself like rode some trails bumped into some people met some met some people like did did my first ever GoProing like gimbal stuff mm -hmm. and i was just like oh i did it and then i came back and i was like i'll remember that trip forever right and, like it was just such money well spent and so that I, was a, I that was a pivotal, a pivotal trip that actually played well into your channel here just recently so you yeah. went down there there was a bunch of stuff that you couldn't do and yeah. as you said your channel was progression and i think that something that you've been capturing very well lately is progression so just yeah. recently you you made a trip back to moab yeah i, I went a couple, yeah i went a, uh i guess it was only a, a few weeks ago almost a month but yeah, yeah I, I went there and i mean admittedly i took i took a like last time i went on my super race enduro bike that's all slack and meant for going down really steep stuff right but this time i took the the short travel bike and it made it a bit easier admittedly but the but, goal was to go and and and, and conquer some yeah. some times and some th things that you were scared of yeah yeah and oh for sure like that was it like i knew i had to because it like it dwell i dwell on stuff so easily like if i don't do it like just yesterday i didn't do this job and i'm like oh what an idiot like why have i not done it and it's just like really when you think about it it's it's so much better to have done it than kind of dwell like the the whole like you know try and fail it's better to have tried and fail than to never have tried at all or, or whatever you like know, this, this phrase your last video and i don't know if anybody is in the chat right now can throw throw a link up to that one in moab but there was a, a point in that video where you're trying to do this climb. Mm. And and spoiler alert, if you guys haven't watched the video, I'm gonna fuck it up right now. But, um, <laughs> okay. So so you, you try this climb like over and over and over and and we're going through that with you as a as a viewer. Yeah. And, and we're watching you just fail. And we know what that feels like. And yeah. and you're just like, God damn it, why can't I fucking get it? And yeah. you're trying again and you're trying again. And, and finally you get to this point where you're like, that's it. Like, yeah. this is the, like the 27th time I've tried to go up this damn rock. Yeah. It's over. I'm yeah. done. And you're telling this story about that. And you're like, Hey, I've driven all this way to try to get up this thing. And here it is here. You know, here yeah. is that moment where I realized that this isn't going to happen. Yeah. And I think as a viewer, when I was watching that, I was there with you. I yeah, was like, yeah. I get it. Yeah, no, dude, you're done. Fuck <clears throat> yeah. And I'm okay with that. And then yeah. you were like, but wait, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to try it one more time. Yeah. And I wasn't expecting that. Like I was, I was fully okay with you just calling it. Yeah. You know, and, and, and you were like, I'm going to try it one more time. And when you said that, there's that little bit of watching you where you're like, I always waste this fucking time. <laughs> yeah. He's already done it fucking 30 more one more time. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and then you get on there and, and you fucking beat it. And yeah. when you, when, when you watch somebody conquer something like that, there is a, 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 a sound in people's voice in their spirit that just like resonates through people. Like there's, there's a few times, like there was a, a, a rock roll that, that, um, single track sampler did that he had hurt himself on pretty bad and he went oh, back the toilet and, bowl in Colorado. Yeah. yeah and he got yeah. a piece of it. And that sound when he did that, that boy, like the way you can hear his soul coming out of his vocal yeah. cords, like you did that when you were climbing that hill. And yeah. that is what makes that stuff so precious and so valuable to, to have been captured. Like yeah. that was a beautiful video just for that one moment. Yeah. So, Thanks. Like you could have just stopped it there. 
Like there was no reason for you to keep riding, but it was like, like yeah. honestly, dude, good job. That was one of that is one of the things that when you, you we started this conversation, you said you started to show people how to like try things. And yeah. I've been watching you consecutively over your last, you know, few videos of really digging deep into that and capturing yeah. it well. You're doing a great job, Paul. Yeah. You're oh, really thank, thanks very much. Like that's yeah. the it's like one thing I've just learned about youtube and you can learn from all the others like casey nice i learn a lot from casey nice that mm -hmm. like oh, there's so many like little bits of genius like in all in all the videos right and really it's like it's about being honest and there's a lot of, like you know there's a lot of especially with me where i like you know you'll skirt around telling the truth or you'll like say like oh oh yeah that thing oh yeah 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 and it's like oh i, I haven't done that and then I kind of went like, what a, what a prick. Like, don't be like this. Like, that's not a good way to live, live your life. Yeah. And like, this is, it's another, and when, like with this YouTube channel, I'm like, should I cut that out? No, leave it in. Like that's, cause that's what happened. Like that's how it went down. And that's like a big thing for me, especially like since, you know, I, I probably say I've been focusing all this, like maybe since about May, like that. And like, cause I kept thinking like, oh my, channel's just so fucking boring it's like everyone else's right and then i was like well what do i actually want to do i want to get better at mountain biking oh well why don't i just like have the channel about this so I was like yeah that makes sense and that's when i when i had that kind of goal it made it made make it coming out with video ideas loads easier yeah there's but a yeah. similarity between your channel and mine in that manner of what you just said is that um you're, you're contemplating that, that shitty moment. And that was one of the things whenever I started my channel was like, I, I actually like, I, I hate climbing, but actually I don't hate it as much as I like bitching about it. So <laughs> it, it like, like I, I really do like secretly like climbing, but I love bitching about it, you know? And it, so it's like, so when I started doing videos, it was like, I'm going to capture that. You guys are going to see me get off my bike and fucking be like just talking shit or whatever. Cause like, those yeah. are the thoughts that are going through my mind. And I yeah. think that that's valuable to capture, you know? Yeah. And the same thing is like, yeah, dude, I could edit my videos and make myself look way better than I do. Yeah. You know, like I probably put more shit in my videos of me fucking up and not doing well and riding slow than I yeah. do like all the moments where I do great. And, it, mm -hmm. and it's because I think that that's the, that's the beauty of this medium that we have right now is the ability to let people like relate, you know, like it, it's relatable content. And I think that that's really important, you know, and I think what you're doing is showing people like the struggle and, and showing them uh, the, how you can overcome that, mm. you know, and, and maybe there's a video or two that you don't meet your goal. But then, you know, three months later or whatever that you go back and you do that again, or you show that progression, I'm not going to give up. I'm going to keep trying, yeah. you know, when my yeah. son was younger, he would, he would, um, like when I first started getting him into riding and he, we would do something and, and he would just be all pissed off, like just, mm. you know, all bugged out about it. Like, oh, I can't get up this hill. It just, it's just horrible. I can't do it. Blah, 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 blah. I'm not, I'm not that kind of guy. I'm not in shape or whatever. And it'd be like, and I would tell him, I'd be like, look, dude, you play video games a lot. You like those? And he's like, yeah, I love playing video games. I'm like, so how did you get good at that game that you're playing? Let's just say it's super smash bros. Like the way that you did that was you played it for hours and hours and hours and hours. And you lost and you got your ass kicked and you got humiliated over and over again. Mm -hmm. But that's what made you better. So this, even though it's a little different, it's a little more painful. Maybe it's a little bit more like you're going to actually knock some skin off your elbows. But mm -hmm. the same thing goes. Like if you want to get better, the only way you're going to do it is continuing to do it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And yeah, I think yeah. that's. You know, that's one of those things that, I mean, all of us, even as adults, that we have to be reminded of. Like, there is times that things will be tough, but the only way to make them easy is to continue to try to do them, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think the big thing is, like, there's a lot of people that hide when they fail. And yeah. I think that's, that's one thing I've learned about this channel is actually, like, you know, my content, I guess, like, really... I make the videos and I put in all those failures is so that I become accountable. 
that's why i say like so if you don't talk about your failures you're not being accountable basically right that's that's what i really feel it's like you know when saying like let's say you didn't get uh if if you're in sales and like you didn't get a deal a lot of people are like oh you know it just didn't end up happening it's like okay well why didn't you analyze why it didn't happen like really look into it and then you you'll only improve because of it but there's a i think i do feel that sometimes not a lot of people embrace failure and it's a pride thing 100 percent. like pride oh, is, yeah pride is I the biggest one of the, of one the of, human yes yeah. I'm sorry. I, I started. I, I have a tendency of talking over people. <laughs> I, I think what I what I wanted to say, and I think you just said the same thing, is like I think pride is one of the biggest things that holds us back. It holds us back more than fear. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and that's that's something that I really like. I am so full of pride, and like when I when I don't do well at something, like I hate it, like a hundred percent. I mean, I'm only I'd like you know you're only human or whatever. Yeah. But when when something when you don't do something and it's embarrassing, it's like, well, fuck, like what well, I look like an idiot. But really, like, you know, the, the whole reason that fights happen, why countries go to war, like all of this stuff. There's actually a really good podcast with um, Anna Faris does it. It's called um, Unqualified. And it's kind of a lot of it is rubbish. But there's this amazing one with uh, Terry Crews. You know, the he's like a comedian now. He's in Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Okay. And he used to be an American football player. He's like that massive dude. I think he was big, in the big, old big Spider-Man. black guy. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know who you're talking about. Kind of looks yeah. like Devo, but but not the same guy, you know? Yeah, yeah. So he's he's massive. And like this whole podcast is just about him, like talking about how he was an NFL footballer, like getting paid loads. And then like his his wife was like, you know, all up all up about leaving him and he was just like oh, i don't care like whatever i'll get another wife whatever and then yeah. he kind of and that's where he, i think he's he talks about like starting to look at himself in the mirror and being like why are you like that like that's not a good way to be and he's like it's pride so yeah. like i know you know a lot of comedians they come out and they say it's like therapy like talking about all their all their downfalls and everything but like my you know my biggest my worst characteristic is my pride, a hundred percent slash frustration with things. But yeah, I think for me, I, I am I'm my own worst critic. Yeah. So like I, I really, really beat myself up about things as much as on my channel I have this very happy go lucky kind of persona, mm -hmm. but like the don't give like no fucks given kind of guy. Yeah. Um but that normally I, goes I, hand in hand with someone that does give a fuck. Yeah. Like yeah, that's, and that's, that's that's what's funny, you know. It's like yeah. you know, always like it, it's like in a relationship, the thing that people like like your significant other loves about you the most is usually the thing that they hate about you the most. And yeah. it and it's like like uh, oh, he's really outgoing, and then I love that that he goes out and he talks to all these people. But then you're with them for a long time, and they're like, I wish he would stop talking to these. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like so, yeah. And, and it, and it's the yeah. same thing in your own personality where where it's like that for me like yeah a lot of my time i'm a no fucks given guy but i am yeah. also i can't tell you just in this like youtube community how many people that i've had like a conversation with you like i am right now today that you know a couple a day from now i end up texting you and going like oh that one joke that i made like i um I've been like really like beating myself up. I hope that I'm not like upset at you. And and they're usually like, I don't even know what you're talking about. Yeah. And and I've like built this thing up in my head. Like it's huge. Yeah. You know? no, but, like that's, that's something that it really helps when you kind of know that you're not alone on stuff yeah. like that. I found. And like, you know, you, you kind of hear people, you hear people talk about it and it's, it's normally like, I'm, I'm sure everyone has done this thing. I d I've done it. You know, you wake up in the middle of the night and then all of a sudden you you think about something that you said seven years ago to that one person. You go, oh, God, yeah. like that was such a shitty thing to do. Yeah. Like, oh, my God. And then you like the kind of introversion of like self self despise happen. Like everyone does it. You go like, oh, God, why did I when I was at university in that one bar? Why did why did I say that thing? Like, yeah. that's so dumb. 
but everyone does it. Like that's a natural thing. If, of so you said doing. it happened seven years ago, and for me, I'm like yesterday. I oh said. yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I say, I, I think of things I said like you know the other day or whatever. But so part me, of it is like I, I just, I, I, my, my comedy is in in very spur of the moment, and yeah. sometimes in my head, the way that I've thought this out especially with my dry ass sense of humor yeah. that I, I lay that onto somebody and I don't think about the, the like long-term like way that they may have looked at that for yeah. that moment. And for me, it was just for a chuckle. Yeah. And then I have that chuckle. And then later I'm thinking about it and I'm like, Oh, that was kind of fucked up what you said, dude. Like, yeah. you know, like but, so if, so what have you done to, kind of stop those moments happening if they're if oh. they're causing you sadness then what have you done to kind of oh i just got really good at apologizing no <laughs> okay <laughs> oh the american way oh i see right yeah yeah <laughs> no don't worry i'm gonna shit on you and then i'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm really gonna be as sincere as i possibly can in my yeah. in my apology <laughs> yeah yeah but like that's the thing like there's a lot of you know there's a lot of people uh, me myself especially you kind of go you know, why did I do that? It's like, oh, wait, hold on. I, I've done this a whole bunch of times. Yeah. And like, yeah. that's, the, I, I was really kind of getting on top of it a couple when I first moved here. And like, I did a lot of reading and um, kind of listened to a lot of podcasts. And there's one really good one called The School of Life that's got a bunch of, uh, a bunch of kind of more philosophical ways of thinking about things. And like, I was really getting on top of it. And I've, I've laxed a bit for sure over the last couple of years. But like, when it's like, I'm and I the biggest hypocrite when I say all of this stuff. But it's like if you want if you want something to change, then you are the person that's gonna change it. And yeah. like the whole the whole kind of, you know, if something bad happens, letting it go. Like that's number one top of my list, like kind of trying to figure out how how to kind of deal with that thing yeah. is like number one. Like I always like case in point, I'm in Moab. And we we were going on just uh, this random like walking day to dead dead horse point, and I have my camera, and I've kind of got confused about how my camera works because it's got two SD card slots, and I open up one, I open up the camera, and I'm like, oh, the video of me with Shane crashing dad is still on this, shouldn't shouldn't be on this, like I've already copied it over and formatted it, oh that must be a mistake, delete, and then I push delete, and then went. Wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. Cancel, and I lost like a whole bunch of clips, like yeah. in the in the video with Shane. Yeah, yeah. And that moment, I just crushed myself, and I like started getting anxiety. You kind of get this thing, and you're like trying to shake it off your hands, and well, you just like get yeah, really I'm, pent up. Yeah, I think the hold thing. Hold on, I'm, hold on. Sorry, Robert. I'm sorry. Oh, no, <laughs> it's there. I'm just burying my heart and soul here. So yeah. like, get really ang anxious about it, and like you know, really nervous and I'm just like, the world falls apart and it started to fall apart because, you know, I've I've now, I've, I've started my own company with Creaco, like I'm looking at doing some uh, produ more production stuff this coming year. And I was like, if I'm that much of an idiot that I delete files off my camera, then what does that mean for everything else? Like, do you know what I mean? And that's where like, like the failure thought is really coming in. But really, the right, the correct answer in that situation is to go, right now, I'm in this moment. I've just deleted things off my camera. There's nothing I can do about it right now. Like, I have no control over this outcome. Dwelling on it is not something that's going to improve the situation. Yeah. What I should have done is I should have just turned my camera off, put it in my bag, locked it up, and gone, I'm going to call Joe with Trail Features <laughs> when I get home and probably figure something out. Bad. Yeah. And the funny thing was, and possibly the life lesson here, is that by me then fiddling with my camera, I made it worse. Right. Like I started to picture like, what's going on. And actually, if I deleted it, stopped it and gone, oh, shit, I've messed up and put it in my camera bag, I would have been able to get all those files back. It's funny that you like, like I said, I'm my own worst enemy. And, and, and in some cases, like I said earlier, I dwell a lot. But mm -hmm. that's one of those also things that... Um, that is is like one of those love or hate things about like my personality. Like if you were say like ask my lady, is that I let things go like super easy, and, and okay. that that is one of those things though that that has done well for me though is because then I I 
I, I remember teaching my kids that like right now that just happened. There's mm -hmm. nothing you can do about it. Yeah. Just let it go. You yeah. know, and, and that's one of those things where sometimes people are like, dude, are you not going to get angry about it? And it's like, well, no, I can't because it's like, yeah, I, it, it's up to you how you spend your time. Mm. You know? yeah. And I don't want to spend my time being pissed off. Yeah. So it's easier just to blow a lot of it off. But, oh, yeah. but it is the personal interaction stuff that I dwell on more is where I feel like I affected somebody's like, like personality, like, like I may have hurt their feelings, like okay. that stuff I, I dwell on where it's something like that. Well, if I deleted my card, I would have been like, ah, well, fuck it. It's over. You know, yeah. like I can't do shit about it now. So I'm just going to have yeah. to go out and keep having a good time. Yeah. But, um, it's funny, funny, funny how things go like that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But so, hey, that's, that's, yeah, for sure. So it's earlier big, you big were thing. talking about Casey Neistat. And um, I, I also like watching other, other YouTube channels that have nothing to do with mountain biking. And lately, my biggest love is this show called Hot Ones. Have you ever watched it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it's interviews that people do or this guy does with mm -hmm. mostly famous people and they eat hot wings and the hot, hot wings start, it's like six or eight of them on, on a tray and they yeah. start from, from the, the low grade stuff and they get to these ridiculously hot ones. And then while they're doing that, they're doing an interview. And so I watched this one with Casey Neistat the other day. And um, during that time, he had asked him about viral videos. And I thought it was a really interesting conversation that they had because Casey said, you know, I think when I started viral videos were very different than they are now. And it really made me start thinking. And what, what he said though, was like, let's just, I don't know what the number of years was that he said, let's just say it was five years ago. And he's like, five years ago, a viral video went viral because it was something that people never saw before. And now it's such a highly engineered thing. And that's like how you started your channel, you know, it's like an engineered viral video to really kick something off. Mm -hmm. And so do you feel like, like creating something like that is taking away from like life experience or it's just showing, like showing it better? Mm, I think if you like, if you, if you got to figure out what your goal is first, right? If your if your goal is to get a lot of views on a video, then that's how you do it. You you figure out the way to do it. Like a lot of my videos lately, uh, apart from like uh, there's been a couple. Like every once in a while, you do need that tentpole tentpole video, right? Something that's going to bring new people into your channel and get them to stick around. Which is kind of what like the the Green Trails one did. It brought a load of. It was very popular. It brought a lot of people in, and they go, okay, I've got this video, but look at the other videos that I'm doing. So there are some videos you need to kind of figure out a few videos that are, you know, what the videos you want to make. And the goal of those videos is to make the best video that you can do. But every once in a while, you're like, OK, I need to stimulate more of that audience coming in. And the way you do that is yeah, to engineer some some bigger videos. But yeah, I think really you've got to always look to the main, you know, the main message of your if you want. You know, if you want your channel to have a message, which all successful channels do, and if, if you want success on this platform, then that's that's kind of what you need to be thinking about. I mean, now I need to have success on this, and you know, the other guys that I work with, like that's that's what it's all pertaining to. But like when I go and make um, like the as one well, I just wrote the oh, what trails I got the Navajo trails mm -hmm. around. Like that was just a video. I was like, oh, some nice things happened. Like it's a memory that I want to have. And it's kind of a challenge to make a video out of what I think is kind of boring content, really. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of why that video was made. But that video, I didn't make it to be successful. I, I made it because I wanted to make the video. And that's like a big, a big thing. Like Casey, like his biggest videos, like the the car, you know, the, the bike lane one, one yeah. of his most famous yeah, of all yeah, time. Yeah. Yeah, like he actually it, talked about that in the uh, in the yeah. interview that I was talking about. Yeah, but it, like he didn't he didn't go. Oh, I'm gonna make this video because it's gonna have like sh huge shock effect and oh, it's just like oh, it's crazy. Like oh, loads of people watch this. Like he made it because 
he was getting really annoyed that bike lanes <laughs> were being yeah. like he got this ticket and like and he's like okay i could actually make a story and like this is the thing i want to say and that's like you know you look you speak to you look at a lot of athletes nowadays and they're like what i'm going to focus on is the process and the thing oh lost your audio just Sorry, like that. i i just hit space bar and it muted it that was great that was a so, printer move. yeah it's a full <laughs> punter live stream move so like the yeah like he wanted that was his focus like to make he's like i just want to make a good video out of this and then it was popular yeah like so that's i think that's what a lot of people especially on youtube is that they're like oh i'm, I'm going to make this video and then it's going to get views and then the youtube truck of money is going to come and like now i'll be famous like brian did it like i should be i'm doing the same thing as brian so i it's gotta it's gotta work out but not, a lot of people don't like actually look at the like talking about videos like a lot of people don't look at the video they're making and go like is that section really good like is that do I want that to be in there? Like that's what Seth does, right? He talks about this all yeah. the time. Yeah. He go, he watches something through, and then he's like, he goes back again, and like, that's a boring bit. Like if you notice now, I do lots of jump cuts between between my chatting. The reason is that I really think that those bits of silence are boring as. Yes. Like if, if you watch if you watch David Dobrik, one of my favorite YouTubers, I can he has a way of making videos which are generally just messing around with his friends and pranks on and taking the piss, right? right? Very juvenile stuff. But he keeps your attention so well. And that's the reason. It's because there's just something happening all the yeah. time. Uh, that's one of the things that I, I learned through editing. And I think this is, you know, valuable for anybody in the in the uh, in our space that's thinking about starting a channel. That's one of the things that I've noticed is go back and watch your video like 13 times after yeah. you after you finish your edit and every time that you get bored cuz now you you have like you won't get bored the first 3 times that you watch it because it's yeah. your shit and you're stoked about it right yeah. but if you go back and you watch it and after 5 times that you've watched it like when you start to drift right there mm. delete that yeah. and that, that's how you get that down and i i've started doing a lot of that too where it's like cut 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 mm. and one of the things that like in my channel and, and, and I don't obviously have the freaking the gold golden ticket because my channel is very small compared to a lot of guys that have started after me. But I think that one of my goals was always to be talking. And when I, when I started was like, I want this to be a, um, a vlog that just so happens to be happening on a bike. Yeah. So, so for me, like, I'm I'm talking when I'm climbing. I'm talking when I'm descending. Like yeah. if I'm talking about you guys joining my Patreon, I'm usually doing that while I'm going down something that's cool, you know. Yeah. So it's like I that's for me because what I personally relate to is people and who they are. And so when I first started my channel, that was one of the things that out of the few channels that were out then, like there would be long bits of just like the trail. And, and for me, it's like, yeah, like I like the trail. I like seeing the trail, but actually I'm watching this for you. Mm. Like, like I want to know more about you. I want to know like where you went to school or what you think about this or why you're pissed off because you paid $10 for gas today or, you know what I mean? Like whatever the fuck mm. it is, you know? And I think that that's one of those things, like what you just said is like, it's really about just like cutting that down and just keeping it entertaining. Mm. I don't know. Um, but then the other the anti the other side of that, which is the kind of the it's not gonna help you succeed. But also there are times where it's like, no, I actually really enjoyed this bit. Like, yeah, yeah it's it's probably boring. Like intros, the the longer you talk, you can see it. People just skip through and they want to get to the band biking. Mm -hmm. So if I was basing all of my decisions based on the watch time retention graph then I should just go, oh, here I am, I'm mountain biking, let's go, and like immediately go straight into it. But I love <laughs> I love the kind of little bits that you can cut in and the banter that might appear when you've got when you've yeah. got a camera and you've, you're talking to someone through it. And like, I, that's I, why I, there's I, sometimes I leave like, it in. There, there's part of me that is very logical and understands algorithms and whatnot, but there's also a part of me with the YouTube beast that I do not fucking believe in at all. And part of it is what you just said. Um, 
if you watch those graphs and you see how people taper off and whatnot, I think that there is there's there's science to that. Yes, you can't freaking you can't you can't dispute math. However, this this day and age that we live in is a very freaking right now but always accessible day. So if you were to watch how I watch a lot of videos and you were to use that as a judgment on how good those channels are doing, it would it would be so incorrect. So let me explain that. I may watch, because I do, I have a job, right? So I may watch three minutes of your video and then walk away. Or I may watch two minutes of your video. Oh, wait, I need to go answer this email, pause, and then I, I answer this email, and then, oh shit, I need to reboot my computer. Oh, now I rebooted it, come back on. Two hours later, I skip four minutes into it, and then I start watching it again. And then um, at that point, uh, my lady's like, hey, can you take out the trash? Oh yeah, yeah, I'm gonna take that out. And then I do that. Yeah. And then the next day I come back and I watch the last three minutes. So what have I done to that algorithm? I really fucked it up. And a lot of people watch it that way. There's a few people that are, you know, that actually have the time in that particular moment to watch that video from the beginning to the end. Yeah. So. So really basing your con content off of those algorithms, I personally feel like it, it's just, it's, it, it's bad science yeah. to me. I mean, you should, and that's where the focusing on making a video because you really want to, yeah. and because you want, you have like a specific thing that you want to make it for. Like a lot of people will just make videos of, oh, I rode this trail. Here's that trail. Mm. You must be interested in it. It's like, yeah, maybe people aren't interested in it. Like I've had so, people tell me, you know, that have channels that are much bigger than mine and they're they're like, look, Rob, like you may not have the the subs that I have, but man, your people are fucking engaged. Yeah. You know, like like so it's like it's hard. You know, there was a yeah, part yeah. earlier in our, our conversation where and I wish I wanted to talk about it then, but here we are now is like, you know, how do you not judge yourself? upon these other channels oh 100 percent, yeah like it's that's so that's tough. a really it's a really yeah it's it because it's an easy thing to do is comparing numbers oh but yeah. like if you if you're just thinking like do you know what i'm gonna like there was a uh, when um h3 did a pog uh had jack septica in their show he was talking about like you know how there was a time where his channel was like oh amazing success and then actually it started to to drop in popularity and people are like, well, you know, you should probably change something. And he's like, well, no, cause I'm pretty, I'm pretty stoked on what I'm making. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep on doing it. And then, sure enough, like because he kept at it and he believed in what he was doing, like he he kind of crept up again. I mean, yeah, that's, you know, that's the, I've... and that's why I always say, like, it your measure of success, you have to decide what that is before and be realistic, like, because if you want to have a channel that's got lots of people coming to it, like loads of people hitting subscribe and loads of views, then you should just go and make crash videos. You know what I mean? Like it should be nothing but crash videos because yeah. every man and his dog wants to watch that. It should be nothing but bike checks of Santa Cruz and Yeti and right. like, you know, specialized, specialized, any specialized video will do better. They're the biggest bike brand in the world. They're the most searched for thing on YouTube or on, uh, well, I guess YouTube's a search engine, but Google. And it's like that, if you want to do that, then you should go and do that. Yeah, I'm very like, competitive. That's... So it's really hard to not, um, to, to not really judge yourself, you know? And, yeah. and I struggle with, I mean, I, I don't know if, if the rest of you guys talk about this as openly as I do, but I fucking struggle with this daily. Like I, I, I every video that I've uploaded, I almost, like there, there's probably five videos out of the last 105 that I did that I actually was stoked about when I uploaded. Yeah. And most of them, I was like, this is the one that's going to make everybody go away. They're going to be yeah. over it, you know? Yeah. And, and like, I, I'm, I'm always just like beating myself up. And I think that I don't, I don't necessarily know what because, I consider but success. You, but your, mm -hmm. it sounds like that your goal is, you know, your channel being popular. And, no, and so, I I, see, but that's the thing is that's, I think what I just said is what's key is like, I don't know what I think my success is. 
You know what I mean? But like you're, I, yeah, so you, you go, okay, success is number of subscribers. So and then tomorrow, I don't have as many as them, so I'm a failure. And then some days I walk in and I'm like, oh, success is that I went out on the trail and somebody recognized me. And another day, success is that I, I scored a fucking 25% discount off for my, my Patreons. But I don't have a consistent way of judging myself. So yeah. instead, I just judge myself on all my failures. You, but you, you know what I mean? It sounds like, yeah, you, you judge yourself based on others' feedback. Yeah. So why well, not why not have a goal where it it's you, you know, your success is 100% controlled by you. Yeah. Like, you know, I, I remember when you did your, the Space Mountain video and I was mm -hmm. like, fuck yeah, go Robert. That's so sick. Like he's got his goal. He wants to lose weight. Like this is what he wants to achieve. Like I cannot wait for the next video. And then kind of that goal just kind of went, you know, I guess it disappeared. Like yeah. your Y video, you were like, oh, let me tell the story. It's like, oh, well, I didn't do it. But yeah. maybe like, you know, I mean, that's if you like if I had my you know, YouTube consulting hat on, yeah. which is now what I do, you know, part of what I do for a living. It's like, OK, no one is doing that on YouTube. That's like the secret to success on YouTube. If no one is doing it, go and do it. I mean, for fuck's sake, I, when when is the next e-bike channel? Like, right. yeah, there's EMBN, but there's no one actually being an e-biker do you know what i mean as an yeah individual. and i think the thing with some of those things like like for example when i was making that video i was thinking a i want i want to lose weight i want to do that and b yeah, yeah there was there was a, a methodical part of me was like dude this is a great story if i can yeah. do this and show people like they'll be fucking amped yeah you know and it would be a great story to see yeah however there's a big variable there is your own personal motivation to actually make that happen yeah. You know, and some of that is is maybe in or out of your control. I don't know, you know, yeah. but like like in that specific one, yeah, that was in my control. But yeah. like sometimes you're 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 maybe even setting yourself up for failure by that, you know. Mm -hmm. But I think at the end of the day, you know, it, it for me, and I think this is like one of those things where where I was talking about earlier is like love or hate with a channel is like, you know. I am very honest with everybody on on my channel, and 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 recently I found out that that sometimes that honesty really kind of pushes people away, and right. and and for me like like recently I went through a pretty big slump, and I was in in a, a spot where I didn't want to fucking edit, and I mm -hmm. and I wasn't happy with what I had to edit, and um, I was I was talking to people about not being happy about it. And, and what that did was they were like, oh, this guy's fucking not stoked. And yeah. instead of it being like, like getting people to feel like, hey, like, hey, this guy's just being real. You know, a lot of people were like, I'm dipping the fuck out, you yeah. know? And, but then and that's so I, the... I, learned a, I learned a valuable lesson there was yeah. like, yes, you need to be honest with people, but you also need to still like have a idea of your direction and and that at the end of the day, people like happy people, you know, people like people that are motivated, people like people that are meeting goals and you can't friggin' like totally wear your heart on your sleeve on YouTube. Uh, like you can't. I but think then that's, can. that's the, the difference there for sure. And forgive me if I'm overstepping boundaries. No, you can never, never, ever, never ever step a bound okay. in the biker bar. Dude. But then like the, that's the, that's the fear of rejection. Mm -hmm. And that's where having the goal of a lot of, a lot of people subscribing and a lot of people watching your video, that's not a positive goal. Yeah. Whereas if you like, for example, I'm doing the BC bike race in uh, in the beginning of July. That's literally seven days of doing forty kilometers a day. Mm -hmm. Right. If I don't train, that's why I'm not drinking. That's why there's no booze around me anymore. Yeah. Like that's why I've stopped it. If I if I don't train and I go into that race, I'm going to fail. And I'm going to be accountable because I will not have done, I probably won't finish it. And this is, I think, again, I think it was a Casey, um, it's in one of his videos. And he said, the, he says, you can't score if you don't have a goal. Yeah. Right. And that's it. Like the moment you don't have anything and people go to the gym or whatever, and they're like, you know, you might go three times a week at the beginning, 
And then it's like, you know, next week you go once and then it's like, oh, actually, I can't be bothered going to the gym. It's because there's no repercussions. There's no um, there's no consequences of you not going to the gym. Yeah. And like the same with my channel videos, the consequence of me not doing this jump is that in the video, I have that forever. And people are like, oh, you didn't you didn't do that jump, hey? Like consequence. Yeah. So and this is it. Like if you just kind of go, oh, you know, yeah, even just having like the one video a week, it's like you have that deadline. And David Dobrik talks about that as well. He's like, I haven't, he said, I haven't missed doing three, uh, three vlogs a week for like the last three years or something. Mm -hmm. I've never missed it because I have the deadline and I have to do it. And if I don't do it, then there's consequences. Everyone's people that have shown interest in my channel are going to get disappointed. Consequences. Right. And that's it. Like that's the that's a really positive goal to have. It's yeah. because you are one hundred percent in control of it. Like that's the thing. Case in point, doing BC by race, and um, I also want to do the Whistler. Like um, not the real EWS, obviously. You can't get into them as easily as I did the first two times I did them. Yeah. But like, if you don't do it, then you know there's failure everywhere. And I that's think it. there's another part of it too that I feel like when we fail because many of us us youtubers have i could i could i could point out five or six people right now with goals that they've had on their channel that they didn't meet and yeah. i think where we fall flat is actually not doing a good representation of why we fell flat because yeah. we're embarrassed you yeah. know yeah. like so so instead of the video like let's just i'll use myself for, for this, like whenever I failed at my weight loss and I just kind of blew over it because yeah. I really didn't want to fucking talk about that. But yeah. I think if I would have sat down and done a vlog or a ride and I really fucking pointed out why I failed and yeah. what that, how that made me feel and how I want to try to overcome it and how I can and what I'm going to do to do that. I feel like that actually would have been inspiring. The failure can be inspiring. It's just yeah. that like, in in ourselves you know that's 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 a man you're really fucking putting yourself out there you know and 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 although you know here we are on youtube and we're just you know these like pseudo public figures because we're on youtube and we're not on nbc or whoever the fuck like we we don't feel like we are and and we we definitely um we we let some shit go you know yeah but then that's that's the that's the goal setting again, right? It's like and like oh you know there's a bigger thing of like you know if you if you don't pass an exam or if you you know you don't do as well as you wanted to do at a sporting event or whatever, right? Like then it's like are you, how what does that mean to you, right? Like and then that's where like doing that's why like BC bike race I've always wanted to do it. If I don't do very well, I will be cut and i'm i'm pretty over being cut about failing in racing mm -hmm. like like i remember like when i did the ews i came like i only beat like 25 percent of the people that were there and i mm -hmm. wanted to beat 50 percent. and like i knew what like i didn't do enough i didn't do enough strength training i did the mm -hmm. wrong type of training and I, I could have done better in my preparation there was nothing wrong with what i did on like the race day it was everything else before that that i'd failed at and that mm -hmm. was like I, and, I, and it kind of gets it gets to the point where it's like well shit i actually hate it so now like with this <laughs> this race it's like shit like i i hate and then like that video the slick video like i hate driving home not have done something like yeah. it's, the, it's the fucking worst and like and that the video it's not yeah it's kind of quite dramatic in how the editing is and the music and everything but like that is how it went down i got up and i sat down and I and I sat there. I'd forgotten to turn my GoPro off. I didn't like leave it running because I was like, "Oh, this would right. be a great shot." I just yeah. forgot to turn it off because I was sat there like, "For fuck's sake!" Like this is so wank. Yeah. Like, and that's when I was like, "Just fuck, just fucking go do it." Yeah. And I went down and like I used to have, you know, I had a bunch of friends in the UK. I, I don't really stay in touch with them anymore. But like I go dirt jumping, and they would give me so much shit. They'd be like fuck's sake Hazen. they like throw things at me and like do this jump <laughs> and back then i wasn't in the right mentality because i was like you know I, I was just like no i just i kind of want to just get out of the city and just like go by my bike whatever like if i if i don't do that jump then whatever but then over the years it's like 
eaten up like the more times you don't do something then it's like do you know what maybe this is a big deal like maybe yeah. this is like maybe this is like the reason i you know won't go mountain biking this week is because i every time i go out i suck at it so mm -hmm. maybe just maybe just do it like maybe just do the one thing so so, so i think um you did a video with bc pov not too long. oh fucking treasure trail yeah that yeah. was and, and so yeah. there was a boatload a very scary and from the outside looking in probably your inside voice was saying i am outside of my league all day today yeah however you fucking like nailed some shit that day dude i mean yeah. some of that stuff dude it, it, it was 25 minutes of roll-ups until you did it you know mm. and, and and i don't know but just i'm just judging by the way that 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 it looked on the video yeah, it's probably about like, that yeah, yeah yeah it's probably about that but, but you really like you really conquered and that yeah. once again coming back into what your channel is and what you're trying to do like yeah. how was that day for you like you were stressed were you stressing between i need this for the video and then also you have this inside voices like dude you're gonna you're gonna knock your fucking teeth out uh yeah i don't really that's a good question because i don't really know why like so there's some sections in there. It was it was pretty. It was a pretty wet day. Yeah. But it was the only day that I could go and do it with Eric. Yeah. And like that was it was just it's like okay, it's just got to happen today. Like you just got to go and do it. So yeah, and I went up, and I was like, it's probably not the best, but you know, if I do a bunch of them, then it'll be good. And there's actually another yeah. video. So, another sometimes one. when you pressure yourself that way, I mean, Seth yeah. just, just last week pressured himself oh, yeah. that way for the video, and and now now he's got you know he's laid up yeah, so yeah. like how how do you overcome that but keep your personal safety in in place well i mean i i there's always a line and like the bonus is that i watch eric do it and it's like and um, you know I, i've got to the point now in mountain biking where i can look at what someone's doing and being like oh right okay he just did this yeah like he's, he's just done that like if my if my bike does the same thing it's probably going to be okay yeah but there's still skill set there dude yeah, I mean, like, so there's like, one. I can't, I can't yeah. ride fucking Red Bull Rampage. I mean, I can watch people do it all day, but I can't fucking do that. But you know that you wouldn't be able to, in the in that moment where you're flying 30 kilometers an hour to the lip and you have to pull up X amount and do yeah. like three taps of braking before it, you know you can do it. So, <laughs> like, case in point, just after that Wait, rock so you're roll. Doing red Rampage next year? Is no, that what no, no. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> so, but that's the thing. Like, I know I couldn't do that. So right. like there's the there's like the next move afterwards, which is like awkward routes, and then you had to pull up and then kind of pop down and then break. I was like, I'm not comfortable with myself that I would push down on the my pedals and pull up for the drop. Like I, I'm not comfortable confident that I would do that, so I'm not gonna do it. Yeah. But the rock roll before, it's like you fucking let go, you roll off, you keep your weight in exactly the same place, and you tense everything just before you hit the compression at the end. And like, mm -hmm. I, I know I can do that. So therefore I can do this thing. Mm -hmm. But it's just about the actually getting and doing it. That's the thing. So is there a moment that's not captured on camera sometime in your life where you overcome something like that and that really sticks out in your memory? Uh, honestly, because I'm such a pussy <laughs> when it comes down to it, maybe. Honestly, maybe the first time I got through A-Line, like doing everything, like uh -huh. the, when like the moon beer had come down, which is like a big jump for those that don't know, and uh -huh. like the side hits and everything. And it was just that one day where I'd always gone through it and I'd not done it. And then I actually went with a, my buddy George and I was like, do you know what? I'm just gonna go the same speed as you because that, that's the answer. If I go the right speed, it's all gonna work. Like there's thousands of people that jump this. Like right. why would I be any different? And then I got through it and I was just like, fuck, well, fuck me. Jumping is a piece of piss, isn't it? And then I remember that day we did a bunch of runs and then we rode Dirt Merchant as well, which is another jump trail. And I was honestly like, let's let's go do Crab Apple. Like it's fucking on. And then at that on that yeah, last so run. For people that don't know, Crab Apple has like some. Yeah, the some biggest jumps in Whistler, yeah. Yeah. But again, it's like the, the principle of everything, it's the same as the little jump. You just do it a bit differently, I guess, for the bigger one, like slower. I've never done them, so I can't actually give advice on it at all. Right. But 
that day, I remember the mentality was like, this is fucking on. It's going to go and do it. And what happened was that actually I got to the bottom and my bike side creaking. And I was like, oh, do you know what? Like, this is weird. Like, they shouldn't be making this noise. Like, I'm going to take you to the shop. Like, I'm going to pick up tomorrow where I left off. They're going to be able to fix it today, whatever. And I go to the shop and it turns out that my seat stays had completely snapped. Oh, shit. And they were just being held together by the bolts, right? Like, they're just oh, the wow. bolts in there. And, like, they took them apart. And they just, apparently the, the bike just went like, like this. Oh, wow. And it's like, it's it's cracked. Like, it's snapped in half. I was like, oh, good oh. thing you didn't do that. Well, yeah, like, yeah, it could have been way worse. It could have been, like, just to the point of catastrophic failure. And then yeah, I, I mean, didn't if get... Yeah, done cry level that day, like, you, 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 you could yeah, have... Yeah, maybe, it. yeah. And then... I'd be like, oh, here's Paul in a, in a wheelchair. Yeah. Paul the wheelchair channel. <laughs> Paul the wheelchair. <laughs> yeah. At, uh, but, yeah, and then, like, it took me, like, two months before I... Was it two months? Maybe. maybe. Like, a month, a month and a half, at least. And I didn't have my downhill bike. And I was back to square one. Because I just like I'd lost that fire because I was just riding my trail bike and I was just ped I was really good at pedaling up stuff like big time because <laughs> I was so, just pedaling around everywhere not riding the bike park. So you talked about defining su de success, mm -hmm. and um, so here you are, just rounding a year. So next year when you're rounding year two, what the what does success look like for Paul Hunter? Uh, I really, I kind of like. Because like there are a couple of occasions where the channel grows so fast, like it's like yeah I've got a number, but I don't feel that there's like really the community of people on there. Do you know what I mean? Uh -huh. Like if I do a live stream, my my live stream number is probably not that dissimilar to you. So it's like is that just because you're more like you have a lot more people in this time zone, and I do a live stream similar time like five o'clock, and there's just less people, or is it? But like I see a bunch of the same people coming back and commenting. Mm -hmm. I always reply to every comment like that's the, the the YouTube studio makes it so easy. Like, yeah, I mean, but just... I, I, I live stream at fucking like one o'clock in the morning or six. Oh, yeah. and, and, I'll never forget your live stream. that was called like probably going uh, going to delete this soon. Yeah. And I was like, oh. <laughs> Clickbait! All right. Is he going to delete his channel? Is he drunk enough that he's just had enough and he's just going to delete it? <laughs> But no, it's just like, no, I'm probably just going to delete this live stream after I've yeah. finished. And I was like, oh, I've been got, oh, I'll sit here and watch it. Like, that's well funny. played. Not even, like, th th that's the thing is, like, there's so many things that I've done like that, that yeah. at the time, I never realized that I was being clickbaity. Like, yeah. when I, I did a video called I Quit Recording. And yeah. um, I... um honestly i had just quit recording for like two months because i had this big backlog mm -hmm. and i found out when i have backlog it like gives me way more anxiety and i just yeah. quit recording and so i just did all these like little 30 second clips like while i was riding while i didn't record and when i put that video up so many people were like oh i watched it because i thought you were like quitting the channel and i was like like it, it was like almost like you know like good and bad at the same time it was like oh yeah. shit, that is not what i wanted to happen but it is what happened, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's funny. So, so is it an, so what I just heard a second ago, is it a number that you're looking at for success? Uh, or is it a bigger community? I think a real success for me would be videos per week. Yeah. Like that, I'm doing like one at the minute. I mean, I'm, there's a lot of, like, I've just started Business Career Co. and I'm on a lot of phone calls and like um, emails every day. And I've, I was like, and I, I've been riding. I mean, I've just wanted to go ride, you know what I mean? Like not do anything else, but it, as in make a video, but it, it's kind of like, there's really nothing holding me back from um, doing two or three videos a week. In all I honesty. feel like, I feel like there's a, a overexposure that is in our space that I, I personally I think that the way that we're doing our formats right now, that two or three videos a week, personally, I think is um, overexposure. And, and it depends think, if it, it, so this, I think that's the same principle with like a video that's too long. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like a movie's too long. Yeah. yeah. They're an hour and a half and you will watch the whole thing. It's because it's good. Like that's yeah. the difference. There's no such thing as a video being too long. It's just like we were talking earlier, like a video is boring at some points and then it becomes right. like pointless like that's that's the difference i mean i i mean last year 
I mean, with Pink Bike, we were doing like four, four or five videos a week. And like, and I was making those as well, as well as making videos on my own channel. So it's like, yeah, but I'll tell you, like, like Pink Bike's posts on Instagram don't keep my attention because there's seventy five of them, you know, and and but Instagram does Instagram serves stuff out weird and. Instagram is not the same as you getting at is, 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 is too much. And if they took just the good ones and showed me those, I'd be engaged with them. But instead I just kind of roll right past them. Yeah. But I think, I think the looking at like the back end of stuff, I know you shouldn't do it, but like, it's just like, if you've got enough good ideas, then you should do more. And I think, I think I've got like a list somewhere on my phone. I mean, I could even, uh, pull it up and if I keep kind of talking and doing lots of filler then I'll, I'll have time to get the video ideas which I have done and like the, all of these are video ideas that I've come up with and I'm pretty sure I just saw it's like there's 50 there's 50 video ideas on there and that's just things I've gone oh what about this and like I think you know I'd enjoy making all those videos I'm so, glad to see that you have a similar list I have one of those too yeah and like it's so <laughs> important because like your brain's not big enough to remember everything right yeah. no one's is so and I really think it's just like today I had a I would say I had a successful day when it came to my own channel like my main focus is I sound like fucking Casey Neistat what an idiot but like <laughs> what a plagiarizing idiot but like my main focus is my business so I can afford my house like yeah. rule one but like my YouTube channel is a part of that. And that's something I've told everyone. It's not the main part at all, not by a long stretch, but it's somewhere that I want to improve because I really enjoy it. Like that's yeah. the thing. I love making videos. I love editing. It's very similar to composing music. I feel the kind of same feeling about that, but like that's, that's my main focus now. But I know that if I like today, that's why I was, I've been on a tangent. Sorry. So <laughs> this is why I edit my videos so much. So like today I woke up early, I started editing this uh, Dirt Jump video that I've got coming out. I did want to post it tomorrow, but time has not allowed that to happen. It wasn't a main goal. Mm -hmm. Like, and I edited for four hours this morning. Then I was like, it's 11 o'clock. Now I have to go and film the other video that I had the idea on, which is an e-bike type video. Mm -hmm. Now I think it's really, I think it's going to come out really well. I'm very excited to put it together. But then it's like, okay, and then I have that, but I have to be home before half past four at least so I can make time for this. All right. And I, a suit and I looked at it and I did everything. I stuck to that schedule. And there's nothing more like enjoyable for me than sticking to the schedule and making sure I've done it and not just giving up and watching YouTube videos for four yeah. hours. I think for me, the thing that that's tough is that I would – I have too many other commitments financially mm. to not be able to put all of my time into it. And, and for me, I'm um, a little bit of a perfectionist with things. Mm. And um, I am upset by not being able to have the time to actually like really make the videos that I really want to make. Yeah. And so then it's a toss up. Do I keep putting out content that is on a faster schedule that is, is flooding people with, with more content yeah. or do I actually come to people and say, you know what, I'm actually just going to do one video a month, but I'm going to like put my heart and soul into it. Yeah. But I mean, if, the, if that one video is like, you know, the, the one good idea, then yeah, that right. makes sense. If you right. have a hundred really good ideas, then you should do it. Yeah. Like you should do it if they are genuinely all good. And like, this is something, you know, I'm only just changing my mindset. Cause I had like, I mean, if you look at what we did on, why did on pink bike, you know, I pushed it over. I think, you know, really we were focusing on it for, well, the eight months. That's when I actually had my own filmer to, to come and, you know, to come and make it. But like mm -hmm. we pushed it over. The goal was to get to a hundred thousand subscribers. That was the goal. And I was like, I know the moment we get to there, then you know, ten thousand to a hundred thousand is the same amount of work as a hundred thousand to a million, right? Like hundred percent. So right. that uh, and that's um, I did it just before, uh, just before I left, and I was so pleased. But now it's like 
since I've left, they've got an extra 40,000 or something subscribers, no, 30,000 extra subscribers. And they haven't been putting in as much effort as when I was there. Like, nope, we're going to upload this video now. So it's like, yeah, you're like, oh, God, that's so annoying. But like, that's that's the thing. We were we were just doing it. And like, oh. it, stuff wasn't 100% perfect. It was like, that's why I said, like, it doesn't have to be 100% perfect. It can be 85% perfect. Yeah, and I think that's one of those key things too that uh, like uh, there was a, a Jordan Boostmaster video that I watched when I first started and one of his things was like, just put the video out. Yeah. And, and I've given that advice to a few other YouTubers that have um, started since then. Yeah. And um, they told me later that that was one of the most valuable things that I could tell them was like- Oh yeah, for sure. Stop, yeah. stop beating yourself up over it being perfect and just put it the fuck out. Yeah. Your first videos will suck to you six months from then. And they'll yeah. be unbearable to watch a year from then. Yeah, but yeah. It, like it is what it is. It, but if you don't do that, it'll never happen. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, 100%. So you, you have this business that you want to like help people like create or promote or what, what, do you want to explain that just a little yeah, bit? Yeah, it's a little bit. Hey, so I don't know what the, what the, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know what the appropriate behavior is, but I'm dying to go to the loo right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> can we like take, can you like do your own thing for like a minute or two and I'll come back and come back? I suppose I can. <laughs> right. Yeah, go Robert, for it. Everyone watching, I'm yeah. very, I'm very yeah, sorry. Yeah. I have so, a tiny bladder. Yeah, I'm gone. All right, hold on. Okay. So we're gonna start this uh, this telecom conference off with why British people have small bladders. So I'm gonna go with first of all, they don't have you know a good drinking drinking ability. No, I'm just kidding. So what what I was just saying? What what the fuck was I just saying? Just a minute ago. Um, I really want to see where my channel can go. And in that, I wanted to ask him about, you know, like, hey, you know, what what do you think that the biker channel is doing wrong? And um, he has this business, as far as I know, that it, it's trying to like to help people with like promotion and marketing and stuff like that. So I'm really curious to see like, what his thought process is because there's parts of it for me in my channel that I, um, I want to see things grow. However, I do know, like, I'm going to make up a new word right now, algorithmically that there's some things that I could do that would really change my channel. However, there are some things about that algorithm way of going about things that I vehemently fucking despise. And one of those is just like saying, hey, like and subscribe. I can't stand that. It, it, it's just like a personal thing for me where it's like I hate I'm, I'm fucking 41 years old. I hate getting on YouTube and I hate just seeing people tell me like I'm watching a video and they're like, oh, make sure you like the, the, the video and make sure you subscribe. And when they say that, it's just like, dude, I'm not a fucking idiot. I know that how this works. I don't I don't need you to tell me that. However, the really weird thing that I've, I've learned about YouTube in, is that it really responds to those things. So they call that in the quote unquote industry, uh, a, like a call to action. So you ask people, hey, if you want to, um, if I want to sell more of these, these uh, mud guards that I talked about at the beginning, if I tell people, hey, go there and buy one, Maybe tomorrow there'll be two or three of these that sold. But if I never said that, and I just know like, hey, people know, go to shop.biker.com, it'll sell. But that's the thing is it won't. It won't sell if you don't have that call to action. And that's one of those things though that like I personally just have a hard time with because I hate that ask people to do something part of, of having a YouTube channel. I hate asking people, Hit the thumbs up button. Like right now, let's take a look. Let's see here. We have 41 thumbs up. The entire last two hours, there has been about 60 people in this stream almost the entire time. And there's only 41 thumbs up. Hey, hit the thumbs up, guys. Let's make it happen. But that's one of those things that I, I don't like asking. However, if I do do it, it does well. 
and then that like feeds the YouTube algorithm beast, and then things get better. So while you were while you were uh, out there taking a piss, um, <laughs> we were talking about my next question for you. And so my next question for you is: You have this business that, from my understanding, is 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 built around marketing for other people. Mm -hmm. And I want you to tell me from a guy that has been watching the biker channel for for uh, a long time, what am I doing wrong? <sighs> okay. Normally I charge for this, just so you know, but I will. Oh, that's all right. That's why I'm right here. <laughs> no, so my so my business in a nutshell is I, I will do it's it's kind of I don't want to ever have any employees. I just kind of want to do do my own thing. And the goal of it is that I, so I can mountain bike more and kind of have more freedom. Like that, I value freedom over anything. Like that's the most important thing. Maybe I am American. Maybe this, <laughs> maybe this is the actually like who I should be. But it's so I do kind of media marketing consulting. If someone asks, that's generally kind of how it goes. Or if like I have a chat to them and it's like, well, yeah, maybe like there'd be something good we can do here. Part of it is helping the other. Um, some of the YouTubers I work with in terms of getting sponsorship, which is like the main focus right now. So like um, we did some sponsored content with Josh on Daily MTB Rider for Gemini Lights. So like there's going to be kind of maybe a few more bits of that coming. It's all kind of wait, like this is the time of year where bike companies spend money, so I have to do that now. The other part of it is pull the bunch of YouTube channel. That's like a section of it. And then the final part is doing kind of content creation which I'm really, I've got a couple of proposals out that hopefully will, will come good. And they're going to be Ooh, really good, when, exciting pieces of content to make happen. When we wrap this up, remind me that I have a really great idea that you and I should talk about. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> so moving so on. So your channel, your channel. Now, I'm talking about me, man. I thought we were talking about me. <laughs> yeah, we can, we can do Robert. Okay, so that's- get um, free shit out of this, dude. Let's look at, let's that's why I started my channel, place. right? And free shit, right? Nice. 100%. Do you know, I actually have a video. I'm just waiting to get more stuff, but it's a video and I'm going to make it 100% the purpose of getting free stuff. All right. Like, you know, I told you, you know, in the Slack group that. Yeah, yeah. I have, a, I have an inkling of what you're talking about. Yeah. So it's what like all the, all the weird stuff and the weird, like for years working in the bike industry, I've had all of these like um, emails coming from China and Taiwan saying, uh, hello, dear. Please, can you make review of our light or whatever? And I'm just like, what if I just said yes to all of these things and see how much stuff I can get? So I've the, some of the stuff I've got is ridiculous, but I have got it, and that's 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 the <laughs> that's the purpose of it. So that's one thing that's coming up, and one one of the things I've got in it is just the most insane thing you'd think to get. But anyway, so. Um, there's nothing wrong with starting a channel to get free stuff. I know loads of bike websites that have started purely to get, to get free stuff. So, uh, I don't, one thing I would say is that you don't need, so a thumbnail exists to get people to click on the video, right? Right. That is the number one goal. So everything in that thumbnail has to be, um, you've got to think like, is this going to, get interest from someone on the sidebar. Like that's the most, the suggested video sidebar. Are you watching so another video, all the wait, videos? Wait, 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 so what you're saying is I need to put tits in all my thumbnails? You'd get a terrible audience and probably get a strike from YouTube, but, but it would dude, work. That's, I mean, that's the audience I'm after, right? <laughs> <laughs> I got the punter. Yeah, that's true. So like, um, there's a couple of things. So number one, your logo. Mm -hmm. Why? Why do you need your logo in it? Um, I will tell you from a, a marketing perspective of why I did that. Initially, what I wanted to do was I know what brand recognition is, and mm -hmm. so when I started, I'm not a a badass rider, and so what I did was I put that logo in the exact same spot in the exact same color, the exact same font every time, so mm -hmm. that way when people did see it that it was brand recognition. And I've been actually considering this lately is letting that go because I have re recognition now. And, but initially the, the main reason that I did that to start out was that every time you saw something white up in that right hand corner, 
and that logo was there that you knew it was from me. It was not a question. So when okay. you start like hiding your logo, like, like that brand recognition over and over again, and I've done a lot of that with my channel mm -hmm. and like the what's up YouTube at the beginning, like that, yeah. the, 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 People know it's a biker video because you right. say, what's up YouTube. Right. And, yeah. and, and when I, if I say like, what's up like that, everybody hears YouTube after that. So yeah. I, that, that was the goal of that. And, and so now, yeah, I'm getting into a space where I need to move outside of that. And so I'm starting to like, like hammer out some ideas of how I'm going to get around that. But mm -hmm. that's also now a, a it, it is a solid part of, of my channel. If I took that away, it would be like, you know, the Cosby family not being the Cosby family anymore. You well, know what I mean? They're I mean? not like the Cosby it, family anymore. All the people. <laughs> but you, you know what I'm saying? Like, like it yeah. has to, like it's part of it. So that, that was the reason. So Correct me if I'm wrong. Was I was I in the wrong place by doing that? I would I would take it out. Yeah, and it takes up too much real estate. Yeah, and the kind of people will click if if they're if they're clicking because of that logo, they're likely subscribed. They they likely are already a fan of you. So and that would come up in their subscription feed, and they would see like you know YouTube channel biker like oh I know that's already, it's already there. So I don't See, think it's important. But yes, on one hand, and, and I, I, I love this conversation, actually, because on one hand, yes. But on the other hand, like that is part of the reason that I have such a loyal base of people. I don't like, think that one reason is why. I think no. you're a likable person and you have <laughs> yeah. like the consistent things in your video, like what's up YouTube, people love that kind of consistency. Yeah. Then they're not clicking on your videos because your logo is in the thumbnail. Gotcha. Like hundred hundred percent. Yeah, no, I I I understand where you're coming from and yeah. agree. So I think like and if you freed that up, you've then got loads more real estate for um for videos. So like for example, the Santa Cruz Bronson one, your logo is tiny. Yes. Like that and I I would I mean I'd be it's you know, it's a pretty like I want to know what the outcome is subject. So it's possibly not a usual thing. But look at the click through rate on that video. Maybe it's a little bit better. Like the focus bike review, on the bike reviews always get lots of views. Oh yeah, that's yeah, that's true. So it's kind of a, a tricky yeah. thing. But like I would honestly like take out that logo and, and focus on what the content is. Yeah. Like okay. and the another thing that I do is I look at the you know, you said the people outside of YouTube, outside of mountain biking. I look at what do the best YouTubers do? And when I say best, I mean the ones that so, so are I'm most a, popular. I'm going to make you, I'm gonna eat your sock, make you eat your sock right now. The best YouTuber in the mountain bike space right now is Seth. Yeah. His, his logo is on every thumbnail. But it's tiny. It's there. It's tiny. You just told me to take it out, though. <laughs> but why do, why do people click on it? Why do people click on a Seth video? If Seth's logo wasn't on all his thumbnails, I might not click on it because I wouldn't I, know it's one of his. I I personally I don't know. Maybe, but there's there's other ways that you could. <laughs> you don't want to admit it. Was I right? But he also, yeah, he does put his he does put his logo in the thumbnail. But also, you know, it's his because of the font, the color of the font. I mean, he used to have the oh, half and branding. half. That's branding. That's what, like, for me, like, when I yeah, chose but, my font, uh, this one the, that's on my chest right now, yeah. like, that font was, like, it was, I agonized over that for weeks. And I showed, yeah. like, my lady, my friends, yeah. like, do you like this font or like this font? And yeah. it had a lot to do with that. This font here is a resemblance of a Star Wars font. My age group is very, like, they, a lot of my, a lot, a lot of the people that watch my video, they recognize it for just that little bit. Yeah. And, and that was all thought that I did put into it. Yeah, I mean the fun is great. It's fantastic. <laughs> it's fantastic, right? So the logo like, needs to be smaller. I got it. Oh, but you don't like my next at, thumbnail. I'm gonna make my logo so small, and then I'm gonna put this is for Paul. <laughs> just like I, there's just no there's I personally think there's no need. there's other stylistic things as you've already said that can tell people that it's a, a so Robert can, video. Yeah without having it take up so much space right. like it's it's not important so the other thing for sure is um the the titling stuff i mean yeah. really like it all I, comes I, down to it all comes yeah, down I, to the title 
and, and I, I really appreciate you saying this because there is a part of me, like I, what, what I was talking about while you're gone is there's a part of me that like knows how things actually work. And there's a part of me that like my, my personal, like, like way that I've navigated through life is a lot of times saying fuck you to what people want me to do. And, and even though I know that will make me successful, I won't do it just because of that. Mm -hmm. And titling is one of those. And I've really been like rubbing myself over the coals a little bit lately about that because there's a lot of videos that I named them the way that I thought would be fun because I wanted them to be fun for me mm -hmm. instead of actually labeling them the way that it explains it well of what's in the video. Mm -hmm. and, and that is, and and I, I I appreciate what you're saying there because what you're saying is dead on, like yeah. it really is. You like should it, you should do really... more. So one thing I always used to say, uh, a ping pong for sure, is like, are you giving something a title or are you giving it a file name? Like things like you know MTV Trail, uh, California POV, but like that sounds like a thing that you'd find in your hard drive. Right. Mm -hmm. So PewDiePie in one of his videos said that um, so he he's had the thing that's resonated, said the thing that resonated with me the most, which was that when you go to an I think it was his like nan or his auntie or something that said it to him. And it was like when people go to to an art museum and they're looking at a piece of art, like the successful art. Isn't the one like if you look at what a, a clickbait is, which makes you go, oh, for fuck's sake, okay, I'll click on it. Like that's not the reaction that you're looking for. The 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 reaction you're looking for is like that someone's looking at it and questioning and going, what 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 is that? Like what what are they? Okay, like and it it gives you that genuine bit of interest and like yeah. inquisitiveness, and that's what you need. That's what thumbnails should be. It shouldn't be like, oh, fuck, you know, like, oh, here's a picture of tits. God, I've got to pick, click on that or whatever. Yeah. It's just like the right amount of... all of those, though. That's <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Roll <Damn>. two. <laughs> anyway, but like, so one perfect example of something that I really agonized over for ages was it's the most viewed video on Pink Bike. It has like 5 million views now, and it's Ben Deacon's uh, POV from the Mega Avalanche. It's a big snow race. And yeah, yeah. There's yeah. like, there's, it's, yeah, it blew up. It, it went so, massive. Wait, just for a second. So, people that don't know what this is, it's like, a, it seems like a hundred thousand guys on mountain bikes going down like this, yeah. like black diamond run of, yeah. of a ski resort and just eating shit over and over and over yeah. again. But somehow yeah. it's very entertaining. Yeah. Well, <laughs> just somehow it's entertaining because of that. <laughs> right. That's it. And I've I've ridden down that mountain. I I tried to do that race. I didn't qualify, but like it's legit. Like it's so hard. So now the vi the content was amazing. Like yeah, there's the crashes. He captured all the action amazingly. Like it has all that. Uh, I chopped down his intro a bit before we we put it up. But the the thumbnail and the title, like I spent ages because I was like, this is great. I don't want to say like crazy crash because that's too that's too cheap to do it like that. You know what I mean? For me, mm -hmm. that's that's my opinion. I, what you want is a really quality audience, someone that's actually interested in mountain biking, et cetera, et cetera. So I scanned through the video and I went, okay, what are the key things here? Okay, there's someone crashing, it's a bike race on snow, and and it's and it's from uh, Ben's perspective, so that you can see it. So that thumbnail. Luckily, there was a frame that had two people crashing in the top left and someone else on a bike going past. And you could clearly see that it was a bike wheel. You could clearly see he had a helmet cam on. And just at that moment, you could clearly see that there were handlebars in the frame. Also, I swear that handlebars in the frame like this compared to handlebars in the frame like this do better. Another yeah. thing I've noticed. So it was there in the frame. It was clearly snow. It had everything. And I was like, that's the exact image, and that's why it's going to be the image. And then you have to pertain to that it's like the action in it is mental, and it's just nuts. But you have to kind of make it like, hey, this is, this is, worth, this is worth your time. So that's why I said the craziest mega avalanche race ever 
dot 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 or something. There you go. And it was and it wasn't in it wasn't in capital letters either. Never do titles in capital letters. It's harder to read. Like and it was just understated. It wasn't like someone shouting you like the craziest mega avalanche ever. It was this is the craziest mega avalanche ever. There you go, people. You have and that's it. Why, and that's why. And like now, that's now we know why the biker channel is not doing well because my font is actually all caps all the time. So, but not in, but not in your title, <laughs> not in your titles. Like yes, that's it the, no, it's not. I'm I'm looking right here. It's like Maui Flow Pineapple Express. Like that's oh, I changed the sizes of them, but it's actually all caps. Oh no! In the thumbnail, I'm talking about in the actual title. Oh, 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 I see. That's okay. what I'm talking. There's no text. See, there's no font. It. Yeah, see? Now, yeah. now I know. Yeah. So there we go. But it's hey, because, now. yeah. It, we, we, have, we have to close on that, dude. You, 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 you told oh, me, the gold. <laughs> get, get yeah. rid of my caps, get rid of my logo, and um, a bunch Focus of more on the image. Have. Focus, huh? make, make the image bigger. And right. make, so, make so no logo, no caps. And handlebars at a 45 degree. No, it's a, a square angle. Yeah. No, no, that doesn't, no, that doesn't do as well. That does better. Oh, the, the, the flat ones do better? Yeah. yeah oh, yeah. Well, then that, that must be why I'm YouTube rolled right now. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, there Paul, it was so much fun talking to you tonight. I hope everybody enjoyed it. We, we rolled right past the two hour mark. I think. You, oh, you wow. Might, you may have the longer, longer biker bar here. I so much fun chatting with you. Um, I, I am anxious to see where your channel goes. Everything that you've been doing to this point has just been like getting better and better. You're stepping your game up. You're stepping it up and up and up. When you told everybody that you were quitting your job at Pink Bike, I was like, man, this guy's taking a leap of faith. And those leap of faith channels have done well. I mean, yeah. BKXC did well. You're doing well. BCOPV or BCPOV is doing well. Um, Lone Ranger is doing well. Like it, it yeah. is fun to see that people want to live vicariously through through you guys, and and it and it is a good time seeing it. And your sense of humor is on point. It really <laughs> Thanks. is. Thanks, Jay. I'm glad that you're a subscriber as well as a uh, a, a an internet friend of, oh, yeah. of the channel as well. Is there anything you want to say about Paul the Punter before we we, we close this up? Oh, not really. I'm I'm narcissistic, but I have I have a line. But what I say to you is like, Robert, just keep making videos. Like, have just have the like. I watch your videos. Like, remember when you did Jeopardy and you said who did Robert bump into on the trail? And I was like, JF rides. You bumped into there. And you, I remember your face. You were like, what? I was like, yeah. I watch everything. Like that's, that's awesome. the that's the most important thing to do. So like, just like if you focus on a goal, like a hundred percent. Like, think as I said before, you can't score if you don't have a goal. And just think, like, do you know what? My life is going to be better if I achieve this goal. And don't worry about your subscriber numbers or views or whatever. And you'll feel so much better. That's that's that is my closing sentiment. I can't wait to see what Robert's goal is. And I'm sure everyone watching this can keep him uh, accountable and keep asking him, "Hey, Robert, what's that goal that Paul asked you to get?" Yeah, it'll yeah, yeah. it'll definitely be fun fun to see where where it goes. You know, at this point, you know, I'm I'm um, almost two years into it, and and honestly, the channel's done so so much better than I than I ever expected. There's been so many things that that I didn't expect to happen. Like even just this last weekend, I um or this weekend, I I, I went up to Georgetown to ride with uh, California Expeditions in Georgetown. I don't know if you got to ride Georgetown where you're down here last time. No, no. If you come to Biker Camp next year, usually Biker Camp Oh, is maybe, yeah. The end of June for those of you guys that, that don't know. It's a free event as it is right now. I'd love to see that turn into a Sedona. But um, if, you, if you get a chance to come down and ride uh, up in Georgetown with California Ventures, it is a great place to ride. And so what happened was I went up there to ride with some of the guys from Stickered, and I get out of the truck. We're 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 filling up the, the the shuttle van, and there's these like four or five like Tongan dudes. These dudes are fucking big guys. They make me look little. Like they okay. beat them big there. And yeah. and the the like I'm saying hi to like the people that I know. Hey, what's up, Rob? How's it going? And then. 
three other, four other guys, these big tongue and motherfuckers come over and they're like, what's up, Rob? And, and they were all subscribers. That's and, amazing. And, and that was beautiful. And that's, that's one of those things where it's like, that's those things that really make having this channel so much fun where it's like, it really wraps it back up for me. When I yeah. think that I'm not having an impression on people and here I am going to somewhere out in the middle of nowhere that nobody should know who I am. And they're like, dude, I watch your shit. It, it makes it very valuable. And all of you guys out there, all of you that, that subscribe to the channel, those of you that, that hit the thumbs up on this, but this uh, video, I actually like you guys, the ones that you didn't. Um, <laughs> so, so um, but, but, but those of you guys no, seriously, like that, that is, is, is a very valuable part. And I want you guys all to know that I appreciate all of you. I appreciate you, Paul, for being here with, with me tonight. Oh, if you guys want to see more of this content, please swing by patreon.biker.com or go to patreon.com and type in biker B1KER and, and just drop a dollar a month into that. And because I gave up all my advertising, I'm 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 going I'm I'm going all in, thinking that you guys are willing to support this this and see this continue to grow, and we'll we will prove Paul wrong. We're gonna put the, the biggest fucking logo, <laughs> on this one, and, and we're gonna use all caps and in, in, <laughs> we're doing the handlebars at 45 degrees. Thank you, Paul. Seriously, this so much no, it's fun been time. great. I, everybody out there, remember it only takes a bike to be a biker. Get the fuck out and be one, bitches. <laughs>